rumble in the house. It's AFL Conference Championship Weekend, the American Conference Championship at stake in San Jose as the San Jose Sabercats host the Chicago Rush. Chicago is led by head coach Mike Hohensee. Moments ago, final word for his ball club, and it didn't include a trip to the lost and found. Last week, you guys made sure there was going to be a new world champ. It's time for us to take advantage of our work. Now, I don't know who it was. Somebody left this on my chair. Right here. Already? Somebody left it on my chair. Somebody believes. That's what it tells me. And if there's one, there's thousands that believe that if somebody's given a second chance, they can take it as far as they want. You got to go out there and prove it to everybody who wants to believe that, that it's true. Let's do this together, fellas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boys, Mike Owens has been using motivational tools, including the Pittsburgh Steelers' improbable run to a Super Bowl victory. His team has won a pair of road playoff games. Darren Arbetta, two-time Arena Bowl champion winner. His team, eight in a row, counting a postseason win last week. San Jose won the coin toss. They have deferred. Bob Papa, Ray Bentley, Marty Snyder. Chicago on the return. Carlos Wright stood up at the six and dropped by Barry Wagner right at that spot. Here's the Chicago offense led by quarterback Matarazio. What a season he has had, Ray Bentley. He has really grown throughout this season. And the guy right there with him, Mike Hohens, he has pressured him and put his thumb on him throughout. And Matt has just responded like a champion. Atu Molden back from injury, a rib injury. He played one snap in the wild card win at Nashville. Not a contributor last week. And Bobby Scipio has opened up the entire offense. 16 catches so far in the postseason. He's the guy that stirs the drink right there for this offense. Molden in motion, Molden the catch, Molden on Cleveland Thomas, ridden into the wall at the 17 yard line, a gain of 11 and a first down for Chicago as we take a look at the San Jose defense. Up front, Joe Jacobs, four sacks coming off injury, Dan Loney in the middle, and Wes Stevens, two sacks on the season. And then when you look at that secondary, Ray Bentley, they have two of the best, Cleveland Thomas and Omar Smith. Yeah, they are two of the best. And they come up and challenge you right from the start of the game. They'll come up and take that motion right at the line, and it'll be a physical battle, and that'll be one of the keys to this ball game. We'll talk about how Chicago will attack that. DeRazio under pressure, got hit, threw it away, incomplete. Jacobs got the hit on the quarterback. Joe and Jacobs in his 11th year out of Utah State. And, and Joe Jacobs is the one guy who is a pure pass rusher for the San Jose football team. He's the guy they're counting on and getting in there. There he is right there working, and it's just a bull rush. He takes John Moyer and puts him right into the lap of Matt DeRazio, and the pressure forces that incompletion. And the postseason, Chicago has yielded oh. two sacks Six, as an offense. Five, five. Second down. Molden again tripped up at the 24 yard line by Barry Wagner. Atu Molden, who had 96 catches last season, Ray, this year had to shift his role a little bit with the arrival of Bobby Scipio. 67 catches, he's healthy and ready to roll. Yeah, Barry Wagner is limping off the field. So that puts number 19, Marquise Floyd, into the lineup early. Wagner, a huge part of San Jose's success in their playoff win last week against Arizona, and they were counting on him for a lot of snaps. Third and three, Molden on the run. Oh, it just depends on where he hit the wall. Uh, he hit the wall short. If you hit the wall and pushed into the wall by a defender, you're considered out of bounds. You can hit the wall as long as the defender did not force you into it, and Molden is short. It'll be fourth and short for Chicago. And Mike Holmes, he's going for it. He's not gonna even blink an eye. Take another look here. Now when Molden is contacted there by a defender and then hits the wall, that's where they mark him out. In the playoff so far, Chicago two for two on fourth down conversions. Their kicker, Dan France, has been hot, but they're just, they think they can get it. DeRazio to throw, his receiver got knocked down, now throws it up for Molden, and flags in the secondary. Uh, and Omar Smith was holding Atu Molden. It was a mugging. 
What a job they did though on Scipio. They knocked him literally onto the ground as he tried to release for his route. Here's Bill McCabe. Holding number 14 defense. 10 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Omar Smith called for the penalty. And give the credit to that Chicago rush pass protection. As they, they allowed Garazio to hold it long enough so that he finally throws it away. And there you see Omar Smith. He's got his hands on him. But the hold occurred prior to that as Molden was trying to get his release. The so, end of the play, that's kind of clean there, but it was it happened early, Bob. So penalty on Omar Smith. First down, Chicago, Scipio in motion. Garazio, Scipio, corner route, incomplete. Floyd on the coverage. Marquise Floyd, a rookie out of West Georgia. Who has really come on and done a nice job. Three interceptions during the regular season. One return for a touchdown. Played an AF2 last year. Yeah, the big thing in this ballgame is going to be the physical play of that San Jose secondary. And we've seen it so far in this first series, Bob. The Chicago Rush is having a hard time getting off of that press. They're, well, they're up pressing again. Coach yeah. Owens, he went to the grease board during our meeting ah, yesterday on ah. how he was going to deal with some of that. Jacobs came across and they blow the play dead. Yeah, one of the things Coach Holmes, he said he would do was vary the formations, not line guys up in the same spot consistently and make San Jose be a little bit behind in terms of finding those guys. Unabated to the quarterback, number 93 defense, five yard penalty, remains second down. Two defensive penalties here on San Jose on the first drive. Yeah, and here's Joe Jacobs right there and you see him get that early start. Trying to guess the snap count like the old Wiley veteran that he is, and he, he missed his guess. All right, Scipio the motion man. Let's see if they vary his route. They do not. Wow, what a hit. By right, Cleveland Thomas on Atu Molden. He gets up clapping right near the first down marker. You know, and Scipio didn't even come in motion on that play, Bob. He just kind of waltzed his way to the line, and he was an outlet, and it was just a two-man route. Here's Garazio looking around. He'll hold the ball for a while. And there's Cleveland Thomas closing hard and laying some wood right there to Atu Molden. We're going to see that kind of thing all day. That's the trademark of Kevin Guy, the defensive coordinator's defense here in San Jose. They get after you. First and goal for three. McMillan tied up by Jacobs. No gain. McMillan and Jacobs are close friends you know Bobby Miller played for San Jose for three years won a championship together with Jacobs so the uh, old friends get to reacquaint themselves Joe Jacobs in his 11th year out of Utah State four-time first team all arena player Matarazio on a second and goal just inside the three they like to run the ball with Molden in that position Molden playing the role of tailback here Great job by the linebacker, Brian Johnson, to shut it down. Yeah, that play had no chance as Johnson tracked the motion of Molden, knew it was tossed. They didn't get the ball to Molden really quick or wide enough, in my opinion, and that made an easy angle for Johnson, the linebacker, coming right through the middle there, sifting his way through and making the hit for a loss. Brian Johnson played defense at New Mexico in the NFL with the 49ers and NFL Europe played running back. Third and goal for Chicago on the opening possession of the ball game. DeRazio, quick hitter, can't find Moyer incomplete. Omar Smith on the coverage. And this is a play that Chicago has had success with throughout the year. Moyer, four catches, three of them for touchdowns. They like to use him down in the goal line and try and catch you off guard and sneak him out. Here's Moyer right over. He's actually over here on the right side, right in the middle of your screen. He gets the release. He beats Wes Stevens off of it, but Omar Smith sees what's happening and comes off of his coverage and makes a huge play for San Jose. Former Sabercat Dan France on for a 20-yard field goal, and he rips it right through. He has been outstanding in the postseason. Hitting field goals of 53 and 52 yards. This one a 20-yard shot. Chicago and Matarazio have a 3-0 lead. In the American Conference Championship, the winner advances to Arena Bowl 20. Thank you for calling AD.
ADT Security Services. I just wanted you to know, that security system saved me twice. You all have given me peace of mind. I tell everybody I see, get an ADT security system. Like these customers and millions more, you'll feel more secure with ADT in your home. ADT can help protect your family from burglary, fire, and carbon monoxide. Call now and save up to $200 on an ADT protection package. You may even save up to 20% off your homeowner's insurance. ADT, always there. Whoa! That's one monster case of athlete's foot. Let's act with tough actin' tenactin. It cools, cures, hey, it even prevents most athlete's foot. Lamisole AT can't say that. Get boom! Tough actin' tenactin. Hey, what's up? Deal or No Deal's $5 million season finale. Then it's The Apprentice Finale live. Two huge finales, all new Monday only on NBC. This fall, the NFL is back on NBC. The biggest games and the best team. Sunday Night Football on NBC. Matarazio on the Chicago Rush with a 3-0 lead over San Jose in the American Conference Championship. Bob Popo along with Ray Bentley, so glad you can join us here on NBC. And uh, trust has been a big factor for the San Jose Sabercats. We'll get a look at them on offense next. Eight wins in a row to sort of revive their season. Yeah, they really struggled early on in the season, but they hung together. They got great veteran leadership, and then they found a couple of young guys, and in particular Ben Nelson, who we'll get a look at here in a little bit as an offensive specialist. But they've been able to put it together and get on a run. Eight straight wins coming into this conference championship ball game. Kevin McKenzie will receive Dan Francis kickoff. McKenzie won an Arena Bowl championship with Colorado last year. Excellent kick off the iron. That's a live ball. McKenzie can't get it out. Got to make the effort to get it out. Great pursuit to the football by the Chicago Rush special team. Here's the offense for the San Jose Sabercats led by quarterback Mark Grieve. Really one of the best in the game and what a week he had last week against Arizona. Yeah he picked Arizona apart. They could not cover Ben Nelson and Mark Reed has got such confidence in him. He'll throw the ball up even when he's covered and expect to win. Meanwhile go ahead Ray. I was just going to say we saw Barry Wagner went out of the game early on so we'll get an update on him but here's the guy Ben Nelson that we're going to keep an eye on throughout this ball game. He's the key to this offense. Yeah Marquise Floyd in there in Wagner's spot. Reed the throw. Floyd wide open. Dennison Robinson makes the tackle at the 21 yard line for an update on Barry Wagner. Let's check in with Marty Snyder. And Bob Barry Wagner is back on the bench, the veteran for San Jose. He had a cramp in his left leg and they had a really tough time working it out. He's going to sit out for a little while, but they say he should return to the game. Barry Wagner telling us yesterday he'd like to play one more season. He's in his 15th year. He'd like to play 16 seasons and give it one more shot next year. Win, lose, or draw. First and ten, San Jose. Nelson in motion. Reed with time to Nelson. Knocked away by Shaw and Robinson. A great timing by Russell Shaw coming in there and getting there just as the ball did and knocking it out because Nelson was open a little bit and Greed kind of floated that ball and that allowed Russell Shaw the time to come from his corner spot and go help out. I think if Greed could have that throw back again Ray he probably would have thrown it a hair earlier a little earlier and maybe on more of a rope but you saw Shaw watch Shaw coming in from the sideline. This is his job to help out there because Dennison Robinson who had the primary coverage was beat and Shaw timed it perfectly. Second and ten row in motion for San Jose. Reed checks down Nelson hit by Unertle short of the first down marker here is the Chicago defense during the regular season as a defense they give up 51 points per ball game John Moyer two sacks in the postseason Kareem Smith two sacks in the postseason and Curtis Eason working the middle Jeremy Unertle during the regular season nine interceptions two in the postseason Dennison Robinson Dewan Alfonso big playmakers in this postseason run. 
for the Sabercats. Greed with time. Checks down. Floyd. Spinning and juking and nearly had his head taken off by Charlie Cook at the 10. But a first down San Jose. That first spin by Floyd. He came out unscathed. The, the second time he tried to spin, Charlie Cook about knocked his top off. Take a look right here. Here's the first spin. He got away with that one. Now Unertle comes up. He goes with another spin. And there's Charlie Cook. So one spin was one, was nice, but two is too many. Bam, right here you're going to see that. That's playoff type aggression. But it is a first down for San Jose. If you get a first without a touchdown. Underneath it goes, and Rose scoops it in at the one. James Rowe was quiet in the win last week against Arizona, but in big spots, he always plays big. Uh, Terry Malley told me they're going to try to go to him 10, 12 times today. That's what they expect out of James Rowe. But look at him continue to work in that route. He even got a little bit of a push off on you, Nerdle, to create the separation. Then he had to go down around the shoe tops to make the grab. Second and one for San Jose at the two. Glover. The fullback handoff Floyd Floyd reaching for the first down and it is close. He might have broken the plane of the first down marker when he reached that ball out but always a dangerous proposition. And this might be where the Sabercats miss Barry Wagner a little bit because he's a big man 225 pounds and he usually is the guy that runs the football there. But they are going to mark it and give them a first down here first and goal inside the one Bob. Well, equipment issue. Looks like Curtis Eason's getting a helmet adjustment. Mark Grieve asking the crowd to keep it down and the PA system. You know, the Sabercats, perennial, one of the top rushing teams in the Arena Football League. Didn't have the yards this year, but they did get it done in the touchdown category. 36 rushing touchdowns. That was good for third in the league. Mark Reed, the 2004 Arena Bowl MVP, Arena Bowl 18, like to get back again. First and goal for one. Glover stumbled, and he loses a couple of yards back to the four. Glover actually led the Arena Football League in rushing touchdowns with 15, and he's a guy, he's their bread and butter when they get down in here, and he slipped. It looked like he stepped on some butter there. About the four-yard line, Bob, no one touches him. There he is, and he's just going to go straight down right there, just stumbling. Good, however, good, good hold at the uh, edge of the line of scrimmage by Jeremy Unerl. You see him right there, number 37. He was holding that point at the end of the line of scrimmage. Second and goal. Grebe had rode it to find him. Caught by Floyd at the one. He's not in. Had to come back for the football. And San Jose tried the same play that Chicago tried. They tried to get that ball to Chuck Reed the uh, tight end in this offensive formation and he wasn't able to get it and so Grieve had to throw his check down here now you got third and goal inside the one and I believe San Jose will run this football and, I, and then I believe if they don't get it they'll run it again on fourth down that's the way they've gotten here and when you get in a game like this Terry Malley knows you dance with the one what brung you third and goal for one false start Chuck Reed of San Jose number 10 playing the left guard spot okay. All right. uh, we'll... James Rowe is saying that one of the defenders barked the signal she can't do that but unless the officials catch her it's all that disconcerting and it is very disconcerting to an offense now you're back into the realm where you're going to have to throw the football as you see there in our bet looking on Here's Reed. He's going to be this guy right up here, and he obviously, he definitely did go early. Third and goal now at the five. Let's give you a little more room to pass, right? Right, and there's Ben Nelson. That's the guy they like to throw the ball up in the air to down here. Reed on third and goal. Reed, row, touchdown San Jose. There's a flag, but I think they'll get Juwan Alfonso, the linebacker for Chicago, out of the box. Yeah, they were definitely going for Nelson originally. Grieve looked back into that corner, and that Illinois threw defense, Alfonso out of the box. Number 23 defense was out of the box. The penalty is declined. Touchdown. 
And then the James Rowe is the guy. He's going to make the play. He's the way man, man in motion. But this guy right here, that's the guy that they're looking for coming across in here originally. And that's where Greaves looking. And you see Alfonso gets out of the box up here, but Rowe just keeps working along the end line and makes a big play. Brian Smith's extra point is good. So on their first offensive possession of the ball game, San Jose and Mark Reed march downfield and get a touchdown after holding Chicago to a field goal. Mark Reed used his legs to buy some time. Old reliable James Rowe with a touchdown. Orlando battles Dallas for a trip to Arena Bowl 20 Las Vegas, Sunday, 3 Eastern, NBC. Before I won the World Series of Poker, I was an accountant. I spent about 80% of my time on the road, which meant a lot of hotel rooms. But when you're on the road a lot and you're looking to play poker, it's hard to find a game. I mean, you don't know anybody in town, and the only way to really find a game is to get online. That's where I found PokerStars.net. Uh, the first time I logged on to PokerStars.net, it was actually really easy to do. It only took a few seconds to download the software. Within probably 10 minutes, I was up and playing. I love poker. There's always a game 24 hours a day. PokerStars.net is always sitting there waiting for you to get on and play. Come in any Aaron Sales and Lease Ownership store and you'll find brand new, brand name furniture, electronics, appliances, and computers. Always at the guaranteed lowest price, whether you buy or lease to own, and no credit checks. So, do the math. Nobody, 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 nobody beats Aaron. Do the math. Nobody beats Aaron's. The AFL on NBC is brought to you by ADT, America's residential and commercial security leader. By Subway, try a mouth-watering, fresh-toasted Tuscan chicken from Subway restaurants for dinner. Subway, eat fresh. And by the makers of Tenactin, it cools, cures, it even prevents most athletes' foot. San Jose is 7-3 lead over Chicago in the conference championship. Let's check in with Marty Snyder. He's with San Jose head coach Darren Arbett. And they were able to hold Chicago to a field goal in that first drive. Coach, how do you slow down one of the hottest teams in the league in Chicago today? You know, we got to put pressure on their quarterback and continue to put our hands on their receivers, and uh, hopefully that can get it done for us. Was the first drive what you wanted, holding them to a field goal? They looked like they were going to score. Yeah, you know, we wanted to hold them to a field goal or a stop with no points, but a field goal is definitely good. And they talked about the confidence they have on the bench here. That's exactly what they wanted. They've let teams get up on them early in games recently. They wanted to not let Chicago do that today. Now, right now, Brian Schmitz and his Sabre Cats out the lead. Carlos Wright to return. He returned three during the season for touchdown. Carlos Wright grabbed by McKenzie and the kicker, Schmidt at the 23-yard line. 33-yard return. Well, tomorrow, Joe Hamilton and the underdog Orlando Predators play Clint Dalzell and the dominating Dallas Desperados with a trip to Arena Bowl 20 Las Vegas on the line. Don't miss the AFL National Conference Championship tomorrow at 3 Eastern New Pacific on NBC. Should be an exciting ball game, Bob. I, I think Dallas is a, the team to beat right now. They rolled against Georgia last week. Matt DeRazio on a first and ten. Scipio caught it. Touchdown, Chicago. That's why they brought in Bobby Scipio to make the improbable plays. 23 yards and the rush take the lead. And he just beat Omar Smith into the corner. Just a little corner route. Brought it inside and then broke it out to the wall. And then he made that catch right on the wall. A lot of times you try to use that wall as an extra defender, and you see Smith is not doesn't have too bad a position. You see him behind a little bit. Actually, it's Floyd, excuse me, 19, not 14. But he got there right on time. It almost looked like Scipio pulled that off of the wall, which is a legal play. Dan France for the extra point. One play, touchdown Chicago to retake the lead. 
We call that the one hitter quitter. And France right down the middle. Bobby Scipio started the year with the Tampa Bay Storm. Didn't work out there. First one, baby. 93 catches in total during the season. 16 in the postseason. His third postseason touchdown. Chicago in front. You're going to like these guys, though. They're a pretty good crew. Everybody listen up. This is LeVon. Hey, LeVon, I'm Winty. You're on the 120 today. How are you? So uh, if there's anything you need, just ask these guys. They'll take care of it, all right? Welcome aboard. Thank you. You ever been around anything this fast before? Yeah, in my last job. See how Army training gives you strength for now, strength for later at GoArmy.com. to play with. Play online at PartyPoker.net, the world's largest Ooh. poker school. More players, more tables, more winners. Sign up now to PartyPoker.net, the best place to learn how to win. All right, all right, okay. Well, the technical term for what I do is neurosurgery. I am a brain doctor. I'm a lifeguard. I save people. I'm a race car driver. Formula two. One. One. Me, oh, I'm a hand model. 20 million? No, that's not enough. I'm a big game hunter, cage fighter. Lumberjack. You must get lonely out there. Yeah, well, I do have the dolphins. I'm an author, mostly books. You told my friend you were a lawyer. In the off season. Hit the links for some great fun and great golf. All for a great cause. Michael Douglas and Friends, presented by Lexus, next Saturday, 4 Eastern, NBC. In one play, Chicago takes the lead 10-7 over San Jose in the American Conference Championship. How did they do it? We go down to the sideline for a sneak peek. Sponsored by Bud Light, here's Marty Snyder. They did it through the skills of Bobby Scipio, and I, I can't understand how you guys can keep going and tell myself, well, the wall's coming up, but I'm going to run at it anyway and try and make a grab. How did you make this grab? Well, um... Hey, I just watched the ball, and hey, I have confidence in myself and in my hands. So Keeping your eye on the wall, too? Oh, yeah, definitely. You can tell I look back at the wall to make see where it was. But, you know, we got pads, so it's not going to hurt us that much. One-handed grab, though. Were you one-handed all the way on that one? Oh, one-handed all the way. I seen the way he threw the ball, and I thought I was going to have to go further than I did to catch it. But that one-hand grab was, was awesome. You almost used the wall to your advantage, almost like another defender, huh? Hey, the wall is live this year, so, you know, the more, the more help we can get, the more we take. All right, Ray, I want to see you catch a couple balls off the wall today, okay? Uh, no, thank you. Scipio's <laughs> <laughs> third postseason touchdown. Kevin McKenzie on the return for San Jose. He's got some room. Carlos Wright finally drops him at the 23-yard line. 35-yard return. McKenzie activated from injured reserve this week. Kevin McKenzie's been out the last eight weeks, and you're going to see him return. You're going to see a nice seam open up right up in through here. Look at that seam open up along the outside. Good block out there by Carl Bates, number 96, on the contain man, knocking him back past midfield, and that enabled McKenzie to get the big return. Final play of the first quarter coming up, Mark Reed. Marquise Floyd, they're not checking him. Danzler on the tackle. Gain of eight. And that is the end of quarter number one. At stake, a trip to Arena Bowl 20 next Sunday in Las Vegas. Will it be Chicago or San Jose? We'll be back after these messages from your local station. You're watching the AFL Conference Championship on NBC. Al Glenn and Charles in New York. We've got our top 10 plays of the year. Here is number 10. 
Grieve to James Rowe, a one-handed catch. I would have used two, Al. <laughs> what do you think? Go to arenafootball.com. We'll have five today and five tomorrow of our top plays of the year. Back to Bob. Pretty nifty catch by James Rowe, one-handed. Bobby Scipio's one-handed touchdown catch has given Chicago a 10-7 lead. The American Conference Championship at stake today. Can Chicago continue this improbable run, slipping into the playoffs, two road playoff victories? We start the second quarter. San Jose with the ball, second and two at the 15. Johnson has a first down for the Sabercats. Meanwhile, Barry Wagner went out early. For more, here's Marty Snyder. And, Bob, they're still working on him on the bench, and it's looking more and more like he might not return to the game. He has tried several times to put weight on his left knee, just says he can't do it. The injury might have uh, scared him really more than anything, but he is in a significant amount of pain. He's tried to make a go of it, but so far no good. They're going to reevaluate at halftime, but it looks like he will not be back in this first half. Well, and that means Marquise Floyd right down here, he's going to have a lot of downs today because he's the guy that backs up. Barry Wagner. Mark Reeve is going to run it for a touchdown. Ten yards on the score. He had two rushing touchdowns during the regular season. Twice now, he's used his legs to create a score. Yeah, and look at this seam right here that he sees. When you get an opening like that, even a guy that isn't prone to running will take off. And Mark Reeve saw that, saw the big opening. The no, nobody there to defend him, and he took it into the end zone. A huge play by the veteran quarterback. Ryan Schmidt for the extra point, and it's good. You know, Reed gave almost a half a pump fake, Ray, that froze Dewan Alfonso, forced him to his left. And that kind of opened up the door for Green and the go-ahead score here in the second. Coach Darren Arbett loving the way his Sabercats have started today. Subway Dinner Theater presents The Beast Within. A stomach studded in London. And now for dinner, Subway Restaurants. And the new Tuscan chicken, hot and fresh from the oven. Tender chicken, melted cheese, grilled vegetables on freshly baked bread. Subway, eat fresh. ParadisePoker.net presents the online poker experience. Play now in the world's only free million dollar online poker tournament. Play online at ParadisePoker.net to be our next poker millionaire. Online now at ParadisePoker.net. Right, but a talking gecko, why? I'll tell you why, because people trust advertising icons. Some bloke tells you to go to geico.com and you're like, really, And just who might you be? But a gecko, he can be trusted. I ask if you want to save hundreds on car insurance, and you're like, yes, thank you. Mind babysitting my kids? And I'm like, of course I'll sit with the kids. You're like a brother to me. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. 18 million people watched the first round of Last Comic Standing. Yeah! And this Tuesday, the winning comics face the biggest audience of their careers. Are you excited to see me live? We're not sure who the heck you are. It all starts at 8, 7 central with a recap of round one. Followed by an all new episode at 9, 8 central Tuesday on NBC. Hey, let's be smart. We're all over him defensively, okay? He had to run for a reason. We're on him defensively. He had to run for a reason. Let's stay on it, baby. Wear him out. We'll show you that reason. Go ahead and run this, fellas. Here's the coverage look right here. Freeze it right there. You're going to have coverage right here, here, and up here. Everything is taken away. Mark Grieve has really nowhere to go with the football. So he gives that pump fake to freeze the Jack linebacker, Dewan Alfonso, and then takes it up that huge hole in the middle and brings it in for a Sabercat touchdown. Mike Cohen, see, even in giving up the touchdown, you know, taking the positive out of it. Ryan Smith to kick off San Jose for the four-point lead. 
Carlos Wright, live ball. Dennison Robinson, the mirror man, was there to protect the possession. That's a huge play by Dennison Robinson, and he did his job to a T. They put him back there, and he basically has the return man's back. He tracks the ball, gets in front of it, and kind of plays like an infielder in baseball. He is expecting a bad hop, and he takes it and retains possession for Chicago. Take another look at this, and you're going to see Dennison Robinson. He's down here at the bottom of your screen. He's the mirror man. He sees that bad bounce, goes right into action, closes on the ball, and comes up with a possession. That's one of those little things that make a big difference. Scipio in motion. Scipio makes the catch. Gives his team a little breathing room. Gain of nine. Levan Thomas on the tackle. And Coach Hohensey going with just a quick three-step drop, a little hitch route by Scipio to try and get out of that shadow of the end zone and create some room where they can now take them five-step drops and send the ball down the field. Says he's had more meetings with Bobby Scipio than any player he's ever had since Scipio came to the team, trying to get him up to speed with their offensive playbook. Hurt. Hurt. Alfonso in motion. Alfonso drops it. He was wide open on the sideline and did not reel it in. And one thing Mike Holmes, he told us he was going to do is vary his motion. And so he's going to take his motion, man. Here's Alfonso. He's going to come, look like he's going this way, and then wind around and end up out here. And what that does is it creates matchup problems for the secondary as far as, all right, who do I got? Where is he going to end up? And that's one of the tactics that Hohenstein wants to use to try and get that San Jose coverage a little bit late and therefore not able to press. Big third and one. DeRazio's going to run it. DeRazio was thinking big. Flag back at the line of scrimmage. He's got the first down of the 21, but we'll check on the flag in the vicinity of offensive holding. That was a late flag that came out. And Kevin Guy, the defensive coordinator for San Jose, is given the holding signal, so maybe he saw something. Bill McCabe has the most important answer. Illegal defense, number eight. The linebacker was out of the box. Hilly has declined. First down. Well, that's got to be number five, McKenzie, because number eight is, is Clevan Thomas. And here he is right there. Uh, he jumped out of my... my <laughs> screen there but he did he jumped out on the pump fake and that's the new rule this year where you know, in the past if you got a pump fake it was okay to jump out of the box they changed that for this year and McKenzie certainly jumped out of the box on that pump fake Go! you see DeRazio an effective runner first and ten Dennison Robinson lost the football turnover Chicago Omar Smith recovered it as Robinson got sandwiched at the 10 yard line. As Chicago's trying to say, hey, he was already down when that ball came up. And what a great block by Bobby Scipio on this play, creating the extra room for Dennison Robinson. But the officials ruled that this is a fumble. Here's Robinson coming right at you, protects the football, but it definitely came out. Marquise Floyd came in and put a wrap on him, and then Omar Smith recovered it. It was a fumble. Chicago has been known to force turnovers here in the postseason, but now they turn it over. And San Jose recovers up 14 to 10. The San Jose Sabercats now have the football trying to go up two scores in the American Conference Championship. Arena Bowl 20, Las Vegas, next Sunday, 3 Eastern, NBC. Refreshingly smooth Bud Light. Always worth it. Bud Light. Our type by two drive. Come in any Aaron Sales and Lease Ownership store and you'll find brand new, brand name furniture, electronics, appliances, and computers. Always at the guaranteed lowest price, whether you buy or lease to own, and no credit checks. So, do the math. Nobody. 
Nobody, nobody, nobody beats Aaron. Do the math. Nobody beats Aaron's. This is a $10,000 seat. A $10,000 seat at Poker's World Championship main event. And now FullTiltPoker.net is giving away 100 of these seats absolutely free. That means 100 of you in 100 of these at the main event free. Plus coaching before the tourney from our pros. And if you win the main event, we'll give you $10 million more. Go to FullTiltPoker.net for a free chance to win as well as the best in poker education. Tournaments are running now. The AFL on NBC is brought to you by refreshingly smooth Bud Light. Always worth it. By Aaron Sales and Lease Ownership. Nobody beats Aaron's. Nobody. And by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. San Jose with a four-point lead here in the second quarter. Chicago turning it over. Dennison Robinson. Yeah, and take another look at this, Bobby. And you're going to see the ball's out right there. And the knees are not on the ground yet. So this is a good call by the officiating crew. That was definitely a fumble for all you Chicago fans who may have been in doubt. Third postseason turnover by the Chicago Rush. And now San Jose has a chance to seize control here, up one possession, trying to go up two. Nelson in motion. Again, it's Floyd on the check down. Floyd gets rattled by Alfonso and Dennison at the 17-yard line, but picks up eight. And an interesting battle that we'll see all day. Jeremy Unertel against Ben Nelson. And that time, Unertel came up to the line and went into a press against the motion. And he wants to vary his techniques. You know, he's been accused of being a guy that plays really high, plays back far. However, he has the athleticism to play up and catch the motion. He's going to do it again here. Second and short, Reeb again, Floyd to the 24-yard line. Robinson and McMillan on the tackle, but they're just checking down on Marquise Floyd, the rookie out of West Georgia who played in AF2 last year. Yeah, and take a look at Floyd. He's just going to be the check down route, just a little hitch route. Get five, six yards up the field and give the quarterback a big target to throw to. And Grieve will initially look at Nelson. If he beats you, Nurdle, initially on the press, then he'll stay with that. But if he doesn't get a free or clean break, he's going to check it down immediately. You see Floyd having a big day with Barry Wagner off. Nelson in motion. Again, it's Floyd. Little hitch route. Robinson on the tackle at the 19 yard line, but a five yard pickup. Marquise Floyd. You know, one adjustment that Chicago can make because Unertel is doing such a good job coming up and pressing the motion, then they, they need to press across the board, and that'll take away those little hitch routes, those little check down routes, and that'll put Mark Grieve in a little bit of a barrel. Now he's going to have to use his feet to create something. I give Mark Grieve a lot of credit. You're seeing his experience as a quarterback. Nelson has been the key figure this year, but he's giving, he's taking what the defense is giving. McKenzie in motion. Reeb. McKenzie. Got it. Touchdown San Jose. What a catch. And what a throw. And what a throw is exactly right, Bob. Mark Reeb kind of threw that one into a trash barrel from 40 yards, 30 yards, and dropped it perfectly into the spot that it has to had to go to. Now Jeremy Unertel is going to have this press coverage right here. And now he gets into a trail technique. Expecting that outside route. He's not in bad shape right there, but look at the accuracy of that pass, dropping it in over the outstretched hands of Unertel on the underneath coverage. You see Shaw coming up over the top. Both men close, but neither had a chance. And Brian Schmitz converts the extra point. So San Jose forces a fumble, and then they march 40 yards downfield. Kevin McKenzie hooking up with Mark Reed, and San Jose now up. 21-10. Well, it was a strong reception on a beautiful pass here on NBC. Why did I join the Army Reserve? It's not just for the experience or the training I can use as a soldier and as a civilian. It's for them, for my country. It's all worth fighting for. 
And the Army Reserve gave me the strength it takes. Visit GoArmyReserve.com. I woke up in the middle of the night, terrified. Someone tried to come in my house. Fortunately, we had an ADT security system. Mrs. Parker, this is ADT. We're receiving an alarm. Are you all right? Yes, we're okay. I'm glad ADT was there, watching out for my family. Don't take chances. Take control of your family's safety with ADT, America's number one security company. Call now and save up to $200 on ADT protection packages. ADT, always there. to play with play online at partypoker.net the world's largest poker school more players more tables more winners sign up now to partypoker.net the best place to learn how to win you folding from the producers of the da vinci code comes treasure hunters follow the clues unlock the secrets crack the code Treasure Hunters, summer's smartest adventure, starts Sunday, June 18th on NBC. Back in New York, five plays today, five tomorrow, then you vote. Here's our second play. Chris Jackson, he's got hops. I would believe that's what you would refer that to, and, and it wouldn't be talking about beer, Al. Go to arenafootball.com and vote for our top play of the year. Back to Bob. <laughs> oh, it's what Ray does when he sees the state come. He yeah. hops over the table. Hey, whatever, whatever's in the way, I'm going to get it. Kevin McKenzie with a gorgeous catch. San Jose in front 21-10. Brian Smith will kick off for the Sabercats. Carlos Wright again with trouble. Juan Alfonso on the return. He's got a chance to go. And he will. Juan Alfonso. Playing the mirror man goes 51 yards for the touchdown for Chicago. That was an amazing play on two fronts. Bob, first of all, his ability to field the football. That was an amazing play in itself. And then to continue on and win his way down the field for the touchdown, that's even better. Sometimes your coverage gets thrown off when that ball takes a bad hop and the blockers continue to work. Alfonso, just always in the right place at the right time, continues to make huge plays for the Chicago run. During the regular season, he returned two for scores, but they were on short kicks. Yeah, onside kicks. Onside kicks. This is a legitimate return. France for the extra point. And he missed it. Dan France has been so good in this postseason for Chicago. Kicking the football misses the extra point. That's the, the shot in the arm that Chicago needed after the turnover led to San Jose points. They needed to do something to get themselves going again. And you see Duan Alfonso was the guy who did it. Got a nice block right there by Peters out front. And then on the cutback, San Jose collapsed over to the one side of the field. Nobody stayed home on the back side. Alfonso saw that, makes his cutback right here. And after that cutback, it's a foot race. And there's nobody close to Duan Alfonso. Juan Alfonso, member of the 2006 All Ironman team. Plays special teams, defense, and offense. And really had a huge game in the wild card win at Nashville. And then followed it up with a huge game against Colorado last week. Bob picked up a fumble, ran 44 yards for a touchdown, also recovered another big fumble in that game. And scored two touchdowns. And reception from Matt DeRazio. So Juan Alfonso is having the playoff run of his life. Chicago, though, has turned the football over once. They trail in the ball game, and San Jose again has an opportunity to go up two possessions. Mark Reeve has been flawless so far for the Sabercats. You know, San Jose struggled on special teams all year. They gave up seven kickoff returns for touchdowns. During the course of the season, and that troubles continue today. Lee Van Thomas. Lee Van Thomas just kind of picking his way up to the 24 yard line. Achu Molden 
on the tackle. Well, last week against Colorado, Dewan Alfonso was awesome as he was against Nashville. Well, here he is picking up that fumble that I talked about, taking that one to the house. A big play there. And uh, also on another fumbled snap, Alfonso crawls his way to the football and then on the ensuing play gets a touchdown and this one later on in the ball game. And he even holds on kicks and had a couple of tremendous holds to save some long field goals by Dan France last week. Seven catches for 63 yards last week. First and 10 San Jose, Nelson in motion. It's been quiet, but the check down has worked as McKenzie drops one along the wall. And the Sabercats have been red hot as we take a look at their offensive possessions. That's pretty good, Bob. Bang, bang, bang. Touchdowns all the way down. And you look at the, the number of plays, that first drive, the long one, the nine-play drive. But after that, they've been getting in there pretty quick. One in three plays and another in four plays. And Terry Malley is the guy, he's the master at finding out where he has a better matchup and exploiting that on the defense. Reeves hit 11 of his first 13. Gets sacked the football it's loose and Chicago has it that's what they've done so well in this postseason get after the quarterback and force turnovers and that was John Moyer coming around from that right side he won he won the race around the edge ran the hoop to get to Mark Grieve and then knocked the ball right out of his hands Moyer had a half sack in the regular season three in the postseason and there's Moyer. you see him working his hands and then Cutting it close and tight, getting around and call that run in the hoop. He ran the hoop to perfection and then watch him get his hands in here. He knows he's got a shot at Mark Reed before he can get his arm going forward and he knocks it right out. Curtis Easton recovered it. Walt Houseman, the defensive coordinator for the Chicago Rush, knowing his veteran star needed to step up and he did. Garazio. Deflected at the line intended for Scipio. Yeah, James Rowe, the Jack linebacker, kind of closed to the front edge of that box and knocked that one away. John Moyer, 2004 Lineman of the Year. Well, he, he was injured a little bit this year, Bob. Here's James Rowe right there. He's going to get to the front edge of that box and get that long wingspan out and just get a tip on the football. But back to Moyer, he had some injuries this year. Only had a half a sack during the regular season, but he's yeah. turned it up in the postseason with three. Second and ten. Juan Alfonso needs some blockers, gets one from Dennison Robinson, takes it just inside the five, right near the first down marker, which would set up a first and goal. So the turnovers now even at one apiece. See Durazio, the pressure's coming up on him. He pump fakes down the field just to hold the defenders and then hits the drop off over there in the flat and lets Alfonso run after the catch. And it is a first and goal for Matt Durazio on the Chicago Rush. Remember on the first possession, they had first and goal. They had to settle for three. Right, and Durazio is a threat to run with the ball down here, and now Chicago doesn't like what they've got. They had to use the timeout. All right, and the play clock was whittling down as well with 4.25 to go in the half. Turnovers, one apiece. Matt Durazio trying to put the Chicago rush back in front. Mark Reeves sacked by John Moyer, who forced the fumble as well. Two of the hottest teams in the AFL battling. Chicago has rallied down the stretch, winning two road playoff games. The Sabercats come in with an eight-game winning streak. A readable 20 on the line. Well, the technical term for what I do is neurosurgery. I am a brain doctor. I'm a lifeguard. I save people. I'm a race car driver. Formula two. One. One. Me, oh, I'm a hand model. 20 million? No, that's not enough. I'm a big game hunter, cage fighter. Lumberjack. Must get lonely out there. Yeah, well, I do have the dolphins. I'm an author, mostly books. You told my friend you were a lawyer. In the off season, Subway Dinner Theater presents On My Own. Ah, <laughs> edgy. And for dinner, Subway.
Subway restaurants. And the new Tuscan chicken, hot and fresh from the oven. Tender chicken, melted cheese, grilled vegetables on freshly baked bread. Subway, eat fresh. Subway presents the Fresh Toasted Performance of the Week. Fireworks in San Jose by Ben Nelson, who set franchise records for receptions, receiving yards, and touchdowns in a playoff game. That's just been a mismatch today. Arizona just can't cover. The AFL's Rookie of the Year toasted the Rattlers as the Red Hot Sabercats won their eighth straight game and advanced in the playoffs. The AFL and Subway. Get fresh. Get toasted. NBC Monday. A night of big finales begins with Deal or No Deal's biggest jackpot ever. Five million dollars. Then it's the Apprentice finale live and you can help Trump choose. You're hired. Two huge finales all new Monday only on NBC. San Jose with the leader in this American Conference Championship. The winner advances to Arena Bowl 20. Lexington to Las Vegas. Chicago. Had a knockoff top seed Colorado last week. San Jose beat up on Arizona. Tomorrow, the National Conference Championship in Dallas. The Desperados and the Orlando Predators await their big showdown in what should be a defensive battle royale. First and goal for Chicago. Scipio in motion. DeRazio to run it. Dumped at the one yard line. Garazio during the regular season, 10 rushing touchdowns. Garazio is a big man. Uh, he, he brings a little bit with him when he runs. He's going to follow the fullback, Charlie Cook, right up there. Cook gets the block on Rowe, the linebacker, and Garazio gets four yards right up behind him on a lead tight play. And Garazio at 6'4, 215. He can carry the football pretty good down here, and he's fearless. Scipio. The motion man. Go! Second and goal. DeRazio bounces off a tackle and he's got the touchdown. And that's the extra drive and the want to from Matt DeRazio that makes a difference. He was stuffed initially. When you talk to opposing quarterbacks, Mark Reeves fumble set up the go ahead score for Chicago. When you talk to other teams, coaches, and players, they say this might be the toughest guy in the entire league. Well, what a block by Charlie Cook taking James Rowe completely out of the picture on that one. And then Durazio, the reaction to the initial stop to stay alive and work it outside and find a hole. France missed his last extra point. Alfonso with a nice catch, and France misses that one. Well, there's two points gone at Chicago. It may come back to haunt them later on in this ball game, although they do take the lead. Dan France has been so good in the postseason. He came into this game having made 13 or 15 extra points. He's missed two. But Matt DeRazio showing that toughness puts the rush ahead here in the second quarter of play. We're back with the Geico Gecko. So now here's the thing I don't understand. People could save hundreds of dollars on car insurance by switching to Geico. What? So I have to ask, why does Geico even need a talking gecko? Well, entertainment. How's that? Look, you can't just tell people that Geico could save them money. It, it's true, yes, but it's a bit boring. So you have a little gecko entertain, play a little guitar or whatever. They think they're watching entertaining television, but they're actually watching a commercial. <laughs> Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. For my sport, the only sunscreen is Coppertone Sport. It's non-greasy, so I won't lose my grip. And it doesn't run in my eyes, no matter how hard I sweat. Coppertone Sport, high-performance sunscreens. Subway Dinner Theater presents On My Own. And for dinner, Subway restaurants. And the new Tuscan chicken, hot and fresh from the oven. Tender chicken, melted cheese, grilled vegetables on freshly baked bread. Subway, eat fresh. Whoa, that's one monster case of athlete's foot. Let's act with tough actin' tenactin. It cools, cures, hey, it even prevents most athlete's foot. Lamisol AT can't say that. Get boom, tough actin' tenactin'. NBC Monday, 
A night of big finales begins with Deal or No Deal's biggest jackpot ever, $5 million. Then it's The Apprentice finale live, and you can help Trump choose. You're hired. Two huge finales, all new Monday, only on NBC. Matt Dorazio has put Chicago in front with a rushing touchdown. A guy who knows how to run the football and has done it at a Hall of Fame caliber is Marshall Falk of the Rams. He's with Marty Snyder. And, and as you say, Bob, you never know who you're going to find at these AFL games. We've seen Vince Young, Dante Culpepper the last few weeks. Marshall Falk just in town playing golf. Decided, you know what, I'm going to go by and see some indoor football. So what's your impression of the indoor game? Hey, it's a very, very exciting game. I, I amounted to this, this football with all the big plays right here. And there's, a, there's talk that you may want to put a team in St. Louis eventually. You'd be interested in that? You know, that's what we're thinking, um, putting together a group, and we're going to try to do it, compete with these guys. Obviously, you've uh, been impressed with the play today. I know also Mark Greed, the quarterback for San Jose, has impressed you with his ball, right? Yeah, he's looking very, very well. I mean, he's, he's putting the ball in places where it needs to be. He's very calm and relaxed, and he's running the team very well. Let's talk about your football team, the St. Louis Rams. Scott Linehan, the new coach. What do you expect this year? Nothing. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, we're expecting a lot from Scott to come in and, uh, you know, get some order back with the team. And, and I think he's going to do a great job at running the offense and being a head coach, having Coach Haslett, who was the head coach down in New Orleans as his defensive coordinator, is really going to help him manage the game. You've gone from league MVP into this new role of, of teacher, if you will, for, for Steven Jackson, who's turned out to be a fantastic back, a thousand-yard back. How long are you going to do that? Um, you know, it's hard to say how long I'm... I, I think that role is over for me. I think Steven has a very in-depth in um, understanding of the game, and, and he's ready to, to be the player that he that he uh, he can be. All right, enjoy the game, right? Thank you. All right, he's having a lot of fun watching the game. He doesn't want to hit the wall, though. He made that point to me. The wall's, the wall's undefeated. He's noticed that, guys. Ben Nelson with the catch. The Marshall plan of bringing an AFL team to St. Louis, and that would create quite a rivalry with a team already in Kansas City with those two teams battling each other. And, of course, Scott Lenahan, the offensive coordinator, going from Miami to head coach of St. Louis. The NFL returns to NBC Thursday night, September the 7th. The defending Super Bowl champion Pittsburgh Steelers taking on the Miami Dolphins. Ball start. No. Oh, now we yeah, get the they, whistle. Got to let whistle on that. <laughs> Bill McKay blew the whistle. He couldn't find the flag as Phil Glover <laughs> went on two. The snap count was three. All right, Bill. Still having trouble with all of his buttons over there. Yeah. Ball start. There we go. Number 31 offense. Five yard penalty. Remains first down. There's Glover right there. You see him. He's just going to get a little bit of jiggle, a little wiggle. Went a little bit early. 275 pounds. You can't miss it. <laughs> Especially with that jiggle. First and 15 for San Jose. Reeb, little screen, Glover. There is a flag on the play at the line of scrimmage. Heck of a play by Charlie Cook, the Mac linebacker, sniffing out that screen and making the tackle. We'll check the call. Illegal defense, number 92, the wrong linebacker blitz. Five-yard penalty, automatic first down. All right, Ray, explain that. The linebacker, the Mac linebacker is the one who blitzes, and he lines up on the tight end side. So here's Charlie Cook, and he's actually, I, I take it back, he lines up on the, the, the guard side. This is the guard, this is the tight end. So Charlie Cook, if he's going to blitz, has to be on the other side. So that's a good pickup by the officials. The Mac linebacker will rush from the side of the guard, the ineligible of the offensive lineman. Chicago was complaining. I saw it just looking at Mike Cohen's lips. He yeah. was yelling at the officials that the fullback came out. That's true, but you still can't rush like Charlie Cook did on that situation. It's a good call. First and ten, Nelson in motion. He's been relatively quiet. Reeb. Going to heave it downfield. Oh, he's got it. Touchdown, San Jose. What an adjustment on the ball for Marquise Floyd, who's having a career day here in the first half, the rookie out of West Georgia. And that's his eighth catch of the day. His season high brighter this was seven. So you're right, a career day for Marquise Floyd. 
And it looked like Jeremy Unerdle just lost the football on that at the end of the play. Penalty was against Chicago, declined by San Jose. Well, Unerdle, who's known for his great ball skills, twice has seen perplexed. And the key here, Grieve has the time. He's able to move around in the pocket, and then he throws up the deep ball here, and you see Unerdle right here. He misses. He, he kind of overruns the thing and didn't know where the ball was, and Floyd did, and he put the brakes on and stepped in front for the catch. Ryan Smith just slips that extra point inside the right upright. So Mark Reeve puts his team back on tap with his third touchdown pass of the ball game. And how about Floyd? Eight catches, 96 yards, and this touchdown. And here he is. He's just running a go route against Unertle. Gets a little push on him here. And Unertle gets his head around, but he doesn't find the ball until it's too late and kept running. Floyd saw the ball. He hit the brakes, and he steps in front for the big play. And Ray, he had a career-high seven catches in his first game of the season against Utah on January the 28th. His previous career high in receiving yards was 80 against Grand Rapids on February the 19th. So he has set new career highs in the first half alone for Darren Arbett and the Sabercats. Jeremy Unertle perplexed. One minute warning in the American Conference Championship. EA Sports Arena Football. Rated E10 for ages 10 and up. EA Sports. It's in the game. For my sport. The only sunscreen is Coppertone Sport. It's non-greasy, so I won't lose my grip. And it doesn't run in my eyes, no matter how hard I sweat. Coppertone Sport, high-performance sunscreens. Come in any Aaron Sales and Lease Ownership store, and you'll find brand new, brand name furniture, electronics, appliances, and computers. Always at the guaranteed lowest price, whether you buy or lease to own, and no credit checks. So, do the math. Nobody, 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 nobody beats Aaron. Do the math. Nobody beats Aaron's. Welcome to the Subway AFL on NBC Studio. Al Trout with Glenn Parker, Charles Davis. At halftime, we'll be talking about what? Well, I'm going to explain how that awful-looking touchdown by San Jose was made possible. And I'm looking forward to us talking with AFL Coach of the Year Will McClay and see how he plans to slow down Orlando's pass rush. Yeah, his Dallas Desperados had an awesome season. They'll play tomorrow in the National Conference Championship. Right now, back to Bob Murray. Championship, Al. It's been the Marquise Floyd Show. With career highs, eight receptions, 96 yards. And he's had to play most of this first half because Barry Wagner got hurt in the first series. So now Wagner is back in the ball game to cover this kick. So he might be able to give Floyd a little bit of a break, but I'll tell you, the way Floyd's playing, forget about it. Onside kick. janerdo has got it. Flag on the play. Looks like San Jose might have crossed the goal line in pursuit of the ball before it was kicked. Well, that was great discipline of Charlie Cook to let that ball continue to roll instead of trying to get it. Right, we need to explain to some of those as we await for Bill McCabe's call first. Continues to play with the microphone. It's not working. Offside against San Jose on the kick. Ray, explain why you would be winning 28-22 with one minute to go on the half and onside kick. Well, what you're going to try and do is steal a possession. And with the one-minute timing rules, the clock will now stop on any out-of-bounds and any incomplete. And so if you don't get it, then you, all right, even if you concede Chicago gets a touchdown, if you manage the clock properly, you'll get the ball back, and you'll score the last touchdown of the half. And then San Jose oh. gets the ball coming out to start the third quarter so they maintain their possession lead. Molden in motion. Terrazio parks it and gives the fans a souvenir. Bates in heavy pursuit. Now with one minute timing rules, the clock stops when a player goes out of bounds or there's an incomplete pass. 
That lucky fan gets to keep the football. All right, so a perfect scenario here for San Jose and Coach Arbet is to force Chicago to have to kick a field goal and then use your timeouts in such a way that you have plenty of time left when you get that ball kicked off to you so you can score the last points of the half knowing that you come out and get the first possession of the third quarter. Atu Molden in motion. Garazio trying to buy some time with his legs and he gets sacked at the 10 yard line. Carl Bates got him. Boy, what a great play by Omar Smith as he saw Atu Molden breaking open and left his man. Here's Omar Smith up here. And here's the here's Atu Molden right here. And you're going to see Atu Molden come across and watch Omar Smith lead Bobby Scipio right here and go pick up that play in the corner to take it away. That's a heck of a job right there. Chicago with one timeout remaining. Now San Jose calls the timeout. See Matt Durazio been hit 10 times so far here in the first half. That's way more than you want your quarterback getting bounced around and Coach Arbet's pass rush has picked itself up here today. San Jose has decided to use one of their timeouts. They're trying to get their defense set with 45 seconds to go here in the half. Coming up on the Subway AFL on NBC Halftime Report, Al Glenn and Charles break down the first half. They'll talk with Dallas head coach Will McClay of the Desperados about their national conference showdown against Orlando tomorrow here on NBC. The Subway AFL on NBC yes. halftime Hi. report. Third down for Matarazio to the end zone. Touchdown, Bobby Scipio. What a great route by Scipio. He ran up the field, he broke it to the corner, and then quickly cut it back across the middle and got himself open. And the protection was there. Watch this route. He's going to come up the field, break it outside, sell that, and then weave his way back around to Van Thomas. And Durazio had the time to wait for that route to develop, and it was wide open. So Matt Durazio with the touchdown pass. Brian, uh, Dan France has missed two extra points. Alfonso to hold, and this time he knocks it right down the middle. So Chicago now with a one-point lead with 41 seconds to go in the half. Bobby Scipio with a second touchdown catch of the day. And again, the protection and then the movement of Matt DeRazio in the pocket works himself away from the rush, and that buys just enough time to hit Scipio breaking open late down the middle of the field. Now San Jose will have the ball to start the third quarter. And they have 41 seconds and two timeouts. Coach Malley in the background and Coach Arbet talking with the squad. Matt DeRazio. Mike Hohensey, head coach of the Chicago Rush. Marquise Floyd, a huge first half with career highs, eight catches, 96 yards. Do you onside kick of your Chicago? Uh, I think with 41 seconds left, and now you, you've lost one of your timeouts, I think you kick this one deep and you play defense. And you at least hope to hold them to a field goal. You know, perfect world for Mike Hohensey is no points at all. And then as you come out, playing that third quarter you're only down a possession the Chicago had more timeouts remaining maybe they have two they've readjusted the timeouts because they took one away from Chicago right it was actually San Jose who, who used that timeout so I think you definitely kick this one deep and try to play some defense Dan France blew out his knee on May the 14th of last year playing for San Jose been a long road back for him. McKenzie on the short kick. Great and coverage. Great coverage. Kareem Smith and Dewan Alfonso with brilliant coverage to hold McKenzie to a limited return. And Chicago is winning the battle on special teams so far here today. Alfonso with the, at least, except for the extra point kicking department. Let me amend that, Bobby. But they did get the long touchdown 51 yarder returned by Alfonso and then the kick coverage there was outstanding giving San Jose a long field as they battled the clock as well. Yanertel of Chicago number 37 has struggled a little bit in coverage with balls in the air today one of his strengths. 
First and ten for Green. Pass batted down at the line and incomplete. Charlie, Charlie Cook. Cook. Got a hand on it. Chance to talk with Charlie a little bit yesterday. And yeah, Mac linebacker, he's on his pass rush right there. You see him working his way in there, and then he does the smart thing and gets his hand up. And he spoke about Bob McMillan, the longtime veteran who kind of taught him this game and taught him many little things about how to be effective from that linebacker spot. And there is one of the 20 greatest players in AFL history, Bob McMillan. Second and 10, Grief, wide open, Floyd again. And that stops the clock as he got knocked out of bounds at the 17-yard line with 30 seconds to go. Yeah, they caught Dennison Robinson guessing he's going to jump in. Here's Dennison Robinson. He's right up here, and he is going to guess and come flying in here to try to make the play on Nelson's little hitch route. Greaves going to see that, and he's going to hit his guy up there. See, Robinson jumped that short route inside. It leaves the outside guy wide open, and if Floyd hadn't stumbled, he might have gone a lot farther. Nine catches for Marquise Floyd. And that's something that Dennison Robinson is, is one of the best at as far as, you know, playing cat and mouse with the quarterback out there on that front side corner. But that time, the, the mouse won, the mouse being grief. Meanwhile, Brian Johnson, the fullback linebacker for San Jose, is down and slow to get up. Take a look at the replay. See if we can see what happened to Brian. Well, there's Johnson right, right there. That fullback linebacker stepping up to get the pass protection, and he gets the legs leaning. And when you do that and somebody collapses you down like that, that's never good. His own teammate, Carl Bates, 96, fell on the left leg of Brian Johnson. And there's Derek Sasha Ray, fullback linebacker coach, talking with Johnson, trying to get him back going. Derek played for San Jose for six years. Scored the first touchdown in San Jose Sabercats history and recorded the first ever sack in Sabercats history. Also played for me over there in Buffalo a couple of years. And that was the low point. For very, him. very cerebral <laughs> player. I was giving his career highlights, not his <laughs> low points. Well, you won't find a better man than Derek Sacheray, I'll tell you that. And he's talked Brian Johnson into staying in. Well, maybe Brian Johnson's talked Coach into staying in. Well, you know, it may be that Phil Glover, is, is the, he was the other fullback, may be dead. And I, what I mean by that is... It, Due to the substitution rules in arena football, he may not be able to return. If you, if you start the quarter, you can go out once and then come back in. If you do not start the quarter and you come in and then go out, you are done for that quarter. And I think that's the situation, and that's why Johnson has to stay in the ball game. Glover is ineligible to play right now under arena football league substitution rules. San Jose charged with a timeout. They have one remaining. 30 seconds to go in the half. Chicago by one here in the American Conference Championship. Reed, Floyd, catch number 10. Once you get out of bounds with the one minute timing rules, the clock stops and it does with 26 seconds to go. And a nice call by Terry Malley running a, a quick screen out there, which basically eliminates Johnson in the play, gives him another play to get himself back together because they get the ball out so quick, he's really not a factor in pass protection. Terry Malley. The first ever front office employee of the Sabercats. Did not start the year calling plays. Nelson in motion. On a second down. Three. There's Nelson. And he dropped it. Unertle closed at the last second. Great play by Jeremy Unertle and the ball skills of finding the football this time. We saw previously where he couldn't find it. He found it against Nelson and is able to rest it away at the end. And this is what I'm talking about with Mark Grieve and willing to just throw it up to Ben Nelson, even though he's covered. And Unertle was able to get his hand in between Nelson's hands. Right there, you see his hand in between the two? That's textbook right there. It's impossible for a guy to catch a ball when you've got your hand in between his. Brian Nelson hurt. You know, we talked with Ben Nelson. He spent time with the Minnesota Vikings. And I asked him about watching Randy Moss and Nate Burleson in practice because he was there for a couple of years and he said I studied their footwork and the way they would decoy a defensive back with their eyes and not give away a pass their way with the ball he said now those two guys were 
unbelievably special athletically, but I studied everything they did. Spent time with the Vikings, got activated, put on the practice squad, went to NFL Europe, and last year there was a numbers game with some injuries in the secondary, and Mike Tice decided to try to make Nelson a safety. He had never played defensive back. Kind of rolled his eyes yesterday when we spoke with him. Yeah, didn't think that was the best decision. But the decision the Sabercats have made now is it was Brian Johnson who was injured again. They're going to bring Barry Wagner out here possibly and have him play the fullback spot because he's the only guy they have left who is alive and able to come into the ball game. And Wagner is certainly capable of playing the fullback linebacker spot at 6'3", 225 pounds. Left leg injury of Brian Johnson. Carl Bates fell on his leg a couple of plays earlier. And Johnson will go in for an early look see. So Barry Wagner, who suffered a leg cramp early, came out of the game, is going to settle in at fullback. Quickly down to Marty Snyder. And guys, they were still working on Barry Wagner's left knee when they decided to put him in the game. So this should be interesting to see how well he holds up. Third and four for the Sabercats. Nelson in motion. Reeb under pressure. Reeb just gets it away and through the hands of Rowe. And incomplete in the fans' box. A great opportunity for a souvenir. You know, an interesting play they ran, though. They sent Barry Wagner through the line to go out on a pass route. They didn't even have him protect. But unfortunately, he was not open. And that brings up a big fourth down now. And Darren Arbett, with the decision to make, opts to go for the field goal, knowing that he'll get the possession coming out in the second half. Start the third. San Jose gets the ball. This is where those two missed extra points really hurt Chicago because if Schmitz makes this field goal for all intents and purposes the game should be tied at 31 but Chicago missed a couple of extra points that might bite Mike Cohency at some point be a huge emotional lift here for Chicago if Schmitz does not convert on this field goal attempt he has not attempted a field goal so far in the postseason obviously San Jose has played just the one game to win in Arizona last week. Yeah, and Darren Arbett doesn't really like the field goal option. You know, just attempting 17 during the course of the season. He, he's a guy that would prefer to go for it on fourth down if he has any opportunity to do so. And you know, Chicago, with two timeouts, is going to get a crack here to put some points on the board themselves before this half runs out. This will be a 42-yard field goal. And Chicago has returned a couple of missed field goals for touchdowns already this season. So that's going to be something that you have to look out for. Schmidt's long this year, 41 yards in the regular season. 42-yard attempt. They've got Bobby Scipio sitting back there to return it off the net if it's missed. High snap. Schmidt sends it on its way, and he's going to miss it left. Scipio on the return. Bobby Scipio runs out of a tackle, and Stoney Case, the backup quarterback, with the tackle with four seconds to go. So Chicago. Chicago is able to get the stop that they needed knowing San Jose gets the ball and they get start. a chance to kick a field goal and Dan France kicked a couple of old, you know 50 plus yard field goals last week so I wouldn't be surprised if Mike Hohensey tried to tack on a few points here and it looks like he's going with Derazio he says he watches France in the warm-ups and then based on that makes a decision on whether or not he'll go for the long field goal. Here comes Dan. And he has made that decision. Dan France, who played for San Jose for two years, suffered a torn ACL in his right knee on May the 14th of last year, has missed two extra points, a 51-yard field goal. He has made field goals of 53 and 52 here in the postseason. Can he do it again? Alfonso to hold, snap is good. Francis kick, got plenty of leg, it's hooking, and it's good! How about that? Dan France with a 51-yard field goal to give Chicago a 32-28 lead at the half. He just made up for those two missed extra points right there, Bobby. And if you remember the 1989 NFC playoff game between the Giants and Rams flipper Anderson, Caught the touchdown pass in overtime and just ran to the tunnel. Dan France kicks a 51-yarder and doesn't wait for the accolades. He heads right to the locker room. Chicago going for their third consecutive road playoff win and a berth in, in Arena Bowl 20 next week. They have the lead at the half. We go to Al Troutwig in New York for the Subway AFL on NBC Halftime Report. 
Welcome inside the Subway AFL on NBC Studio. Subway, eat fresh. Here's Al Trotwig. So everything is even now. The missed opportunities, the turnovers, the stops. However, it's Chicago in front. I'm with Glenn Parker, of course, and Charles Davis. Let's get right to the opinion of how much changed in the last minute of this first half. Well, for me, I think everything changed because Chicago was the decided underdog coming in on the road for the whole time in the playoffs. 30 minutes to burst their bubble. They still believe, especially now after that field goal. Yeah, I, I think they're in the game, but really nothing's changed when you're San Jose because you were possession down no matter what. You're possession down now, and you get the ball coming out. Nothing's changed for them. All right, let's go back and show you how this unfolded. You never know when the stops are going to come, first possession or last. And for Mike Cohensey, the head coach of Chicago, the decisions came early, sparked in part by some good San Jose secondary defense. Yeah, they, San Jose starts off tough, plays good defense, and forces them to make this decision here, Charles. Yeah, that was a third down pass to the tight end John Moore that was broken up they elected to kick the field goal so that becomes a stop for San Jose and it wasn't ending there the bad news for Chicago yeah this turn to this turn over here Dennison Robinson the fumble was forced Omar Smith jumped on it turned into seven points for San Jose and they appeared to be in control at this point of the game and clearly the replay did show that that was a fumble so what about it you have the ball inside the five fourth down chance early in the game are you kicking or are you trying to go for a touchdown there I've always been a big believer in going for the touchdown just because a field goal doesn't feel like much in this league because everybody says a field goal is a stop I say go for the six but right now Mike Owens is a lot smarter than I am <laughs> you know in my heart I say go for it as well Al but you know what when you're the, the underdog and you're on the road you take the points where you get them you don't have to win the game in the first possession they he played it smart did the opposite what I would have done but he came through in the correct manner so at that point of the game, everything feels like it's going San Jose's way, especially when you look at the way Chicago could not get to the quarterback at all early. Yeah, John Grieve had lots of time, and then when he didn't have time, he was able to make a run like this by a bad defensive play by Dewan Alfonso, who runs out of the box and opens up a huge hole for him. Yeah, the secondary had covered it quite well on that play. All right, so what changes now? Well, there's substitution rules, guys you're going against, but really, just credit John Moyer, who runs the hoop well, they call it. It's a good, tight arc around the uh, tackle, makes the strip. He, uh, he causes a fumble, Curtis Eason picks it up, and of course that leads to good things for Chicago. Now here's the problem. This is going to be a problem all day for Chicago. Jeremy Nurdle cannot turn his hips in the proper manner. When I say that, he's got good straight ahead speed, he can undercut the ball well, but when he plays a straight up go run, he can't turn his hips well, and that's going to be a problem all day. We almost saw another touchdown right at the end of the quarter. So and maybe it's a very good athlete in the wrong position. Meanwhile, coming up next, we're going to preview tomorrow's National Conference Championship game. And we'll talk live to Dallas Desperados head coach Will McClay. As we go to break, though, here is a look at our third candidate for play of the year. It happened when Chicago took on Colorado. Charles, take us through it. How special is this play by Damian Harrell? Well, Damian Harrell is a very special player. Two-time AFL Offensive Player of the Year. And here's a reason why. Never gave up on the play. Takes the hit and keeps his concentration on the quarterback in the ball. It does not get much better than that. Go to arenafootball.com and vote for the play of the year. The coach next live. They come from all over America, America, hoping to be the next great sensation. Some will impress you. Others will distress you. But first, they all must face. And everybody who follows the sport knows that he deserves this chance he's going to get tomorrow taking on the Orlando Predators. He joins us now in Texas. And, Coach, before we talk about tomorrow, I'd love to know about last week. You screamed at your team so badly we couldn't even air it at the end of the first quarter when things were going badly. And their response was unbelievable. I thought that really changed the game. Tell me what your memories are of what happened. Well, you know, part of the deal with our team, we're an excitable team. We hadn't played in a while, and we had a little rust. And uh, we came out a little too aggressive. And what we talked about was just it's not about you personally. It's about how what you do affects the team. And the guys responded. And as long as we take care of our business, we have an opportunity to be very successful. It hey, will. Last week, Tony Graziani got hit 25 times by the Orlando pass rush. But you guys have protected Clint so well all year. He's only been dropped twice. How do you continue to protect him in this ball game? Well, you know, the, as you know, these games are one up front. We've uh, got Terry Gray that 
protects uh, it teaches the offensive line how to protect and we're able to get pass rush but also protect ours clint does a great job of getting rid of the ball and using it effectively but we've got to be on our p's and q's because orlando can come after the passer well coach knowing that they're getting after the passer how much pressure does that put on clint dozell then to make the proper decision and understand the coverage behind them well clint understands that we know some of the different things we can get Jay does a great job of making his front match his coverage, and uh, Clint's just aware of those things, and he'll make the right decisions, and he's done it all year. You know, as we continue to talk about this pass rush, I want to focus on your team because it seems we're asking all these questions about Orlando, but you have the best record in the league. You're the coach of the year. How did this team come together and become as dominant as you were during the regular season? Well, we made some great moves to help us out in the, uh, the offseason. Uh, we brought in Clint Dozell, Devin Wyman, brought Diallo Burks back. We had a great deal of depth here from the year before. What we wanted to do was come in and go to work every day and go game by game, not look too far ahead. And the character of the team has brought us to this point now. Now it's not only going to be character, but we're going to have to get prepared to face a very good uh, Orlando team that has been where we want to go. You know, we should be the underdogs, you know, all those things. So we just want to come in and handle our business at home. Well, Coach, let's, let's stay with this theme and talk about the Dallas Desperados. Tell us a little bit about Colston Rutherington and the pressure you guys can put to bear on Joey Hamilton. Well, you know, that, how this, uh, we learned this game. I learned this game was you went up front first, putting pressure on the passer. Learned that from Coach Markham. So we went out and we we're, were able to get the best guys, and Colston Rutherington is a, a very important cog in that. What he does is he's able to get to the passer in a number of different ways. So if you pay attention to Colson, then we've got Devin Wyman, Ricky Simpkins, Duke Pettyjohn, all those guys that can still come after the passer. And it allows us to mix some things up in the secondary. Just quickly, Coach, as we wrap things up, what part of the AFL coaching family tree do you consider yourself to be part of? Is that going to be a Markham or a Hohenzee? Uh, well, I'm part of the good. It started with Markham. I learned the game with Markham, so I'm a part of that tree. And a Hohenzee is my cousin, and I coach with Jay. So I got a little bit of everybody, and hopefully we can – find the right pieces and, and, and bring a championship here. Thanks a lot, Coach. We'll see you tomorrow. That's Will McClay, right, the head you. coach of the Dallas Desperados. A reminder tomorrow, we start things off at 12 noon with our continuing coverage of the French Open from Paris, including the conclusion of the James Blake match, which was called because of darkness, tied at one set each. Then at 3 o'clock, you'll see the Dallas Desperados of Coach McClay take on the Orlando Predators in the National Conference Championship game. We'll get you back to San Jose where the Sabercats are trailing the Chicago Rush right after these messages. Thanks for joining the Subway AFL on NBC Studio. Experience the new great taste of a fresh toasted sub today. Subway, eat fresh. Start. Day on NBC. Back in San Jose at the half, the American Conference Championship, Chicago with a 32-28 lead over San Jose. The winner advances to Arena Bowl 20 next weekend in Las Vegas. Bob Popo along with Ray Bentley and Ray. Very exciting first half, very competitive first half, and a lot of big plays, like the Little Debbie big plays in that first half. And there were a lot of things that happened. Both teams making some huge efforts. Well, let's take a look at some of those big plays in the first half. Started out Bobby Scipio, one-handed catch along the wall to get Chicago rolling on offense. And then Mark Grieve will answer with his legs. Sees a little opening there, shoots up the middle. He gets a rushing touchdown. And then later on, the fumbles, one for each team. This one, Dennison Robinson loses the ball, recovered by Omar Smith. And then John Moyer with the sack and the forced fumble. And he made the big play right there. And then that last field goal, Bob. 51 yards by Dan France at the horn to give Chicago a four-point edge. That's today's Little Debbie's big plays. What did Mike Coency think about it? Come on, Danny. Come on, Danny. That's good. That's good. Ready first half for Chicago and the rush head coach is with Marty Snyder. And let's talk to him about that. Just how much that game changed in the last few minutes. How much did the game change in the last minute of the first half, coach? It changes quite a bit. I thought momentum swung our way there, right at the end there. I thought our guys did a good job executing our plan. What's the plan for the second half? I know you wanted a quick start. Didn't quite come to you. Well, we need to get a stop here. Hold At least hold them to a field goal and then uh, 
hopefully offensively we can control the football. And that's exactly what I talked to Coach Darren Arbett about for San Jose. He said, you know, we have to get a score on this first drive. Very critical. Kevin McKenzie would like to get a score on the kickoff return. Dan France, who missed a couple of extra points, but made a 51-yard field goal at the horn. Squibs the kick off the iron. Excellent kick. McKenzie, nowhere to go. Woody Dantzler dives in and makes the tackle. There is a flag on the play. And that's holding against San Jose. So it'll be backed up even from that spot. team penalties half the distance to the goal first down Darren our bets team called for the hole the head coach of the San Jose Sabercats what a outstanding career he has had as head coach of the Sabercats winning a couple of arena bowls twice being the AFL coach of the year Mark Reed cool under fire leads his team out of the huddle Bill Glover starts at that fullback spot where we saw Brian Johnson injured late in that first half. James Rowe tackled at the five for an injury update. Here's Marty. And guys, speaking of Brian Johnson, just asked uh, the trainers for San Jose, and they said that he is still in the locker room being evaluated. His return right now is very questionable. It is a left knee that they're concerned with. They should have an update here in a few minutes. So Barry Wagner have to come in and play a play at fullback. You know, the other guy, Bob, that they have is Chuck Reed, who is that offensive tight end right now he has played fullback linebacker for this team in the past he may have to do some of that today Nelson in motion he beat your on the release and he's got it inside the 10 all right that's the first time that we've seen Nelson really shake loose down the field he had about three steps on you and he had to wait for the ball or that would have been a touchdown Here's Grieve watching him the whole way, and Nelson beat Unirtle with an inside escape right at the line of scrimmage, and Unirtle got in that trail position. Here he is trailing, and now when he sees Nelson look for the ball, he's going to get his head back, but by then it's too late. The ball arrives. Big play by the Cats. Third catch of the day for Nelson. First and goal. Grieve. Whoa! Touchdown, San Jose. Second touchdown catch of the game for James Rowe. And San Jose back out in front. And what a great route by James Rowe. He takes it up the field. He's going to work it outside. Here he is coming in motion. He's going to take it up the field. He's going to turn the shoulders outside and then bounce off of Unirtle back to that other corner. And it was a high low on that backside as Nelson had run underneath. And that corner had to come up and respect that. And that opened it up for Mark Reed. Schmidt's extra point is good. So just what Darren Arbett had asked for from his team. A touchdown on the opening drive. James Rowe from eight yards out. The big play, Mark Reed. To Ben Nelson. For 35 yards. Rowe with two touchdown catches in the ball game. Chicago and San Jose battling for a berth to Arena Bowl 20. Orlando battles Dallas for a trip to Arena Bowl 20 Las Vegas, Sunday, 3 Eastern, NBC. Hello, beautiful. Oh, yeah. No one to play with. Play online at PartyPoker.net, the world's largest poker school. More players, more tables, more winners. Sign up now to PartyPoker.net, the best place to learn how to win. You folding? Loctite Power Grab grabs instantly. With nine times higher initial hold than the leading brand. Without bracing. Loctite Power Grab. Project solved. Come into any Aaron Sales and Lease Ownership store and you'll find brand new, brand name furniture, electronics, appliances, and computers. Always at the guaranteed lowest price, whether you buy or lease to own, and no credit checks. So, do the math. Nobody 
Nobody, nobody, nobody beats Aaron. Do the math. Nobody beats Aaron's. The AFL on NBC is brought to you by EA Sports Arena Football. It's more fun indoors. And by light top power grab construction adhesive. Works fast, holds strong, project solved. Bob Papa, Ray Bentley, Marty Snyder in San Jose with the extra point. Sabercats up 35-32 here in the third quarter of play. Mark Reed finding James Rowe for the second time today in the end zone. Chicago has missed two extra points. All right, take a look at this, Bobby, and Marquise Floyd. What a first half he's had. And then Rowe and Nelson each only had two grabs in the first half. So they came out and realized they got to get that ball to their big players here in the second half, and they did that in the first drive. Carlos Wright. Oh, man. He got plastered and fighting to get out to the one-yard line. I think Wright was worried that he may have broken the plane in his initial charge and thought he'd better fight his way out of the end zone and avoid a safety, and that's why he kept battling his way out. Aubrey Battle put a big hit on him. Here he is fumbling for the football, and you know, as he gets up into the line here, he's worried that he might have broken the plane right here on this hit, and that's a legitimate worry. So he doesn't want to allow a safety, so he keeps fighting, and he gets it back out past that goal line to be sure that there was no safety on the play even though he probably didn't break the plane it's a heads up play by Carlos Wright. First and ten to Matarazio. Atu Molden in motion. Glover. Yeah, he went early. That's scooped up by Rowe into the end zone. It won't count. Yeah, Phil Glover, the linebacker, came flying through the line and busted up the whole play. Yeah, he cannot be going forward towards the line of scrimmage at the snap. That Mac linebacker has to be stationary. And he was on his way as the ball was snapped. And they're going to get him for a second neutral zone infraction. And it's clearly a, a good call. There he is right there. You saw he was moving prior to the snap. And that second neutral zone is the heels of the defensive lineman. You can't penetrate past that either by alignment or by moving prior to the snap. First and five for Chicago. Molded in motion. Durazio with time. Durazio for Scipio. What a catch by Bobby Scipio. And they say he dropped it. At the end, Scipio doesn't believe it, Bob. It's ruled incomplete. The 6-3 Scipio felt he had it. Omar Smith on the coverage. And Durazio bought a little time to make the throw. And Scipio's like, didn't think he was going to get the ball. And he gets, gets the hands on Smith, comes down with it. Hey, wow, that looked like a catch, right? Well, we can't see it from the angle that the official had. Maybe we can see it from this angle. I think as he brings it down. Got it? He's got it there. Two feet. But as he brings it down right there, I think the ball came out. Well, we're going to take another look at it on a... Second down, the pass incomplete. Ray, it looked like he had the ball as he went down to the ground, and then when he hit the ground on the tackle, it popped out. Well, you got to have possession of the ball at the end of the play. And I think that's where he, he lost it. If indeed it did not hit the ground prior to that, and we couldn't really tell from our angle. Big third and five here for Mike Hohensey in the Chicago rush. Down by three. There's Scipio. Working on Cleveland Thomas. He got a release. Scipio dropped that one flag. Oh, he's getting a call. Might be a makeup call. You can make a case for that. Although Cleveland Thomas is a physical player back there, and he has a habit of shoving the receiver in the middle of the back just as the ball gets there, and that's what he did. The defense. 10-yard penalty, automatic first down. Levan Thomas gets away with that tactic quite often. Watch him at the end here. Just as Scipio's getting the ball, the hands are on the back, and then the shove just as the ball comes in, and the officials well aware of that technique that, that Thomas does so well, and they make the proper call. I mean, he's hooked on the guy's shoulder pad. Yeah. He's been making a living doing that in his career. Both of those penalties 
on from Ann Thompson. First down, DeRazio just heaves it for Dennison Robinson. Floyd on the coverage incomplete. Boy, DeRazio took a hit from Joe Jacobs as he let that thing go. Jacobs working on John Moyer on the top side, and DeRazio held the ball for the long route, and Jacobs got a late release, and watch him plant DeRazio after he lets it go. Ball's out, wham. Jacobs finishes it, and puts his full weight on DeRazio onto the turf. DeRazio likes getting hit, though. Yeah, he he does. told us a couple <laughs> weeks ago. I don't feel like I'm in the game unless I'm getting knocked around a little bit. DeRazio 0 for 3 this half, yeah. Bob. Second and 10. Under pressure. Trying to get it to Moyer incomplete. Well, Phil Glover had excellent coverage on Moyer. That's his responsibility to cover that tight end on any kind of tight end release play. And he covered him perfectly. Garazio had to lay it out there, not really expecting Moyer to be able to get it. Huge third down here now for Chicago. There's Moyer right there in the middle, and you see Glover on him the whole way and then making a play at the end to stop Moyer from making the catch. Third and 10 for the rush. Scipio in motion. And now timeout. Nope, they didn't get the timeout. It's a delay of game. I don't know. I think Scipio got it in time, but they're going to say that maybe he didn't. And I think the officials need to talk about this one. Well, the back judge, Joe Duncan, had a flag out. Well, you know, a new rule this year, the head coach can also call a timeout. It doesn't have to be a player on the field. It is delay of game. You know what? Five yards complete. Main third down. In hindsight, Ray, in arena football, especially with no punting, it's third now and 15. You're better off not using the timeout and taking the getting call for the Yeah, timeout. I don't think Mike Holmes is too upset about it because he's still got his three timeouts. But they do have to get an extra five yards here to convert now at third and 15. But it's two downs. Or you could maybe kick a field goal and try to tie it up. I'd rather save the timeouts, though. Scipio in motion. DeRazio on a third and 15. Omar Smith on the back, and that's a flag. He Good got call. there early, Bob. Good call by the back judge again on the back of Scipio. And Bobby, Bobby Scipio is a physical mismatch for Omar Smith. And Smith feels that he's got to get his hands in there and make a play like that. You know, Smith, 5'9", 186, and Scipio goes 6'3", 220. 10-yard penalty, automatic first down. When we talked with Bobby Scipio yesterday, he said, I don't care about their press. They got to deal with me. Right there, yeah, he mugged him. He had the arms wrapped around well before the ball comes in. Right there, bam, Omar Smith wrapping up Scipio before the ball arrived. A nice call by the officials and a conversion for the rush. Right. And Chicago didn't wind up having to use that timeout. <laughs> all the drives on this, or all the yards on this drive are via penalty right now. Scipio in motion, screen for Charlie Cook with blockers. Big Charlie. He's James Rowe fighting to bring him down and finally does at the 10-yard line. 18 yards on the reception, his longest of the season. Flag on the play as well. John Moyer had a great block leading Cook down the field. Roughing the passer, number 96 defense. 10 yards to be assessed half the distance from the end of the file. Carl Bates the play, roughing the passer. Take a look at DeRazio. He's got to hold it for a little while, and that's uh, illegal. You know, it doesn't look like much, but you got to keep your hands off him after the ball's gone. It's that simple. That's just a bad play by Bates. The quarterback is right in front of you. You've seen he's released the ball. Pull your hands away. Yeah, there's no need in that. That's, that's just not a smart penalty. So first and goal for Chicago. Trying to regain the lead here in the third. Scipio will be in motion. They like to run it with Molden yeah. right there. Molden on the wing. He goes out in pattern. Garazio gets a yard, and that's it. Joe Jacobs and Dan Loney on the tackle. You know, and he had Atu Molden wide open on a little whip route there, and Garazio just couldn't spot him, and he felt the pressure, 
caving. He felt the walls caving in, and he never got it to Molden. Now, here's Molden right there at the wing. Watch him on this route. He's going to work inside a little bit and then break out, and he is wide open right there. Nobody near him, but DeRazio not able to see it. Second and goal for Chicago at the four. Dennis and Robinson loops in motion. DeRazio, Scipio, touchdown Chicago as Scipio gets planted by Omar Smith. But the rush regained the lead. And what touch by Matt DeRazio, feathering the ball over the Jack linebacker with perfect timing. Here's the Jack linebacker, James Rowe. That's the guy he's got to get the ball over as you see Scipio break free on that rub route. He just gets it past the hands of James Rowe. Here's that rub route working in behind his receivers over there. Actually ran into Atu Molden, but the throw was perfect. Dan Francis missed two extra points. Has hit a 51-yard field goal. Oh, he just sneaks that inside the left upright. It's good. Bobby Scipio has made his receptions count. Three touchdowns, plus he's drawn a couple of pass interferences. Using that big frame, talking with his quarterback, Matt DeRazio, Chicago in front here in the third. Two bracelets. Awesome. Well, you, you know, these aren't easy to win. I remember this one like it was yesterday. My opponent had me down to my left. Sorry. Anyway out of my last few chips so i had to call and to learn chat and play with the pros for free go where they live fulltiltpoker.net now available on mac what's this nagafuki surprise if you can eat nagafuki surprise whole table get bud light hey yes. Yes. i'm in nagafuki surprise i've been to japan can't surprise me <laughs> eat bud light and one nagafuki surprise hey. Huh, look at this. <laughs> What's the big deal? Surprise! Refreshingly smooth Bud Light. Always worth it. Tastes kind of funny. It lay eggs now. Enjoy. After 20 seasons of hard-hitting, high-octane, fan-friendly football, we found yet another reason to celebrate. The Arena Football League has teamed up with Children's Miracle Network to help kids in children's hospitals. Players, coaches, staff, and owners are making a difference for kids in your community. Together, we'll make miracles happen. Bobby Scipio's third touchdown catch of the game has given Chicago the lead over San Jose here in the third. Adam Marty Snyder for a sneak peek sponsored right, guys, by Bud Light. Talk and talk about that last drive, Bob. Uh, Matt DeRazio just took an absolute pounding on so many plays. I, I know one or, once or twice it was kind of hard to get up, wasn't it? Oh, no, you know what? It's just part of the game. That's football. You know what? And uh, bleeding and fighting with these guys this whole time, man, I couldn't be prouder to be a part of an organization uh, like Chicago Rush. And we're going to keep fighting until the end. That's, that's, that's no, no, no doubt about that. That last pass for the touchdown. Nice touch on that ball. Did you, did you know you got to feather it in there like that? Yeah, I know James Rowe is a heck of a jack, and you know what? You never want to give him something he can handle. So, you know, he had to get it up high and, and make sure Sip could get it. Vertical dive drive here for San Jose. It feels like down here, Chicago's retaking the momentum. Dan France on the kickoff. McKenzie, tough catch. DJ Blysap in coverage. And then Shaw trips him up at the five-yard line. Well, and that's the third time in a row Chicago has done an outstanding job covering a kick. As you see, Mark Grieve taking the field in the fourth quarter, or excuse me, second half last week. He was nine for nine with three touchdowns. That's, that's what you expect from a veteran leader and a guy who knows how to win a championship. And they got it out of Mark Grieve last week. Grieve with four touchdown passes today. He has fumbled it once on a sack by John Moyer that got Chicago right back in the mix. Pretty good numbers on the day as well. Nelson in motion. Reed, row. Tackled by Shaw. Gain of about four or five on the play. Well, they continue to check down to the underneath receivers. Floyd with 10 catches. Rowe adds another. Terry Malley wanted to get Ben Nelson involved. Nelson had a big catch in the last possession. 
Uh, you know, Nelson was the guy that had him going last week with a dozen catches, six of them for touchdowns. And here today, just three for 54 and no touchdowns. Chicago has come up with a great plan to take him out of the picture. Reeb underneath McKenzie. Dennison Robinson slowed him down and waited for help. From Atu Molden. It is a first down for San Jose here in the third. The winner of this game advances to Arena Bowl 20 in Las Vegas next Sunday. Will it be Matarazio in the Chicago Rush? Mark Reeve and San Jose have won the Arena Bowl twice. You don't see Jeremy Unertle up here pressing Ben Nelson on his motion this half. McKenzie, little slip screen. Dennison Robinson shuts it down in a hurry. It's a gain of only a yard. And Dennison Robinson is outstanding coming up and making tackles. But to get back to that matchup between Unertle and Nelson, right now you got to give Jeremy Unertle the nod. He is taking... Ben Nelson out of this ball game and look at the tail of the tape the speed is pretty much even right here and here and the size 6 1 against 6 3 you has the size to get up at the line and challenge Ben Nelson he Nel has the speed to play him from off as well Nelson in motion makes the catch and Nerdle just made the tackle gain of 10 first down San Jose and that's still a win for Chicago because you is happy he just doesn't want to get beat deep and he can't get beat deep this is not going to kill you San Jose is not going to win the game by running a little stack route here with Ben Nelson as long as you comes up and makes the tackle and forces him to play another down he's happy and he's winning first and ten San Jose Nelson and you Nelson in motion Reeb again McKenzie that's a good catch along the wall at the 14 yard line. You know, and Terry Malley will take what is given to him. And Mark Grieve is of a like mind with Terry Malley. And the way Chicago's playing now with you nerdle off, they're giving him the check down. Those are the things that are there. And so San Jose will be content to take those and then try to punch it in when they get down there inside the five yard line. Time consuming, well executed drive. Second and four with row in motion. Reed avoids the sack, has Nelson, first down to the nine. For more on Terry Malley, let's check in with Marty Snyder. Well, guys, I was talking to him before this possession. He told me about being patient on offense. That's been his key all afternoon long. As you guys said, taking what they're giving him. He also said they're not checking all of our guys. In the first half, they weren't guarding Marquise Floyd. That's why he had so many catches. We kept going to him. They never picked him up. They do want to get... Ben Nelson or number 80 involved more involved in the offense in this drive they've done it once but they would like to get him a touchdown here and they are when you got a weapon like that you have to give him chances first and goal Glover on the run Glover down to about the two yard line Lyseth on the tackle and Glover has played this entire quarter with just a minute 42 left Bob he's got to be getting a little winded but you can't tell on this play here he is in the key block right out there excellent job of blocking by number 95 Aubrey Battle pushing things out of the way to make it happen also the center Frank Beatty leading the way second and goal for San Jose trying to regain the lead here in the third McKenzie in motion McKenzie fighting touchdown chance to make that play but he shot inside too much McKenzie saw it bounced it outside and broke that tackle the arm tackle here's Molden right here he is going to shoot right straight up into this gap but McKenzie who's coming behind here is going to see it and bounce it outside and get himself into the end zone a little chip block by Glover was all he needed and McKenzie took it outside away from that pressure from Molden Ryan Schmidt for the extra point and he hits it with 42 seconds to go in the third. San Jose regains the lead, 42-39. McKenzie has one in the air and one on the ground. This one from two yards out. The battle continues, a berth to Arena Bowl 20 on the line. Thank you for calling ADT Security Services. I just wanted you to know that security system saved me twice. 
You all have given me peace of mind. I tell everybody I see, get an ADT security system. Like these customers and millions more, you'll feel more secure with ADT in your home. ADT can help protect your family from burglary, fire, and carbon monoxide. Call now and save up to $200 on an ADT protection package. You may even save up to 20% off your homeowner's insurance. ADT, always there. Hi, I'm Danny with AbsolutePoker.net. I'm here to invite you to play with me at one of the biggest and best poker destinations in the world. I have a seat waiting for you. So go to AbsolutePoker.net and download the free software. AbsolutePoker.net. I'm all in. Dude, that's my soup. <sighs> AbsolutePoker.net. You in? Cyber Dinner Theater presents The Beast Within. <laughs> Stomach studded in London. And now for dinner, Savoy Restaurant. And the new Tuscan chicken, hot and fresh from the oven. Tender chicken, melted cheese, grilled vegetables on freshly baked bread. Savoy, eat fresh. It's the battle for sports most revered trophy, the Stanley Cup. The Hurricanes, Captain Rod Brindamore's Game 7 heroes lifted them into the championship round. The Oilers, can big game goalie Dwayne Rosen and these ultimate underdogs pull off another upset? The Stanley Cup Final on NBC, presented by Sprint, next Saturday in prime time, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. The winner today captures the American Conference Championship and a berth in Arena Bowl 20 next Sunday in Las Vegas. You'll see it here on NBC. Bob Papa, Ray Bentley, Marty Snyder, 42 seconds to go in the third. San Jose back on top, 42-39. Carlos right back deep. He's had some trouble with balls off the net. Yeah, these nets are old arena nets. That's a bad kick, but it's not handled by Wright. Turf Monster gets him, and he's dropped at the nine. 13 yard return. That was a very returnable kick, Ray, but he muffed it. Yeah, I think he got overexcited with the opportunity of a, a low liner type kick, knuckleballer. And it gave it that when you see one of these as a returner, you know you've got a chance. And you're right, his eyes got up the field looking for that gap that he might get. And he took him off the ball. And when you do that, odds are pretty good. It's going to slip through your grasp. And Fox is moving here. Well, Chicago doesn't have enough men in the huddle. Don't, don't. They gonna, are they going to use their timeout? I would not. I'd take the penalty. You know, we, especially in a tight game like this, you want to save those timeouts if you can. Well, let's see. Let's see if they call the timeout or they're going to get the penalty. And they ended up taking the timeout, which, uh, you know, we're going to keep an eye on that. That is, Chicago comes up short one timeout late. That, that can be a problem. Yeah, just... Unnecessary use of a timeout by Chicago with six seconds to go in the third. Come in any Aaron Sales and Lease Ownership store and you'll find brand new, brand name furniture, electronics, appliances, and computers. Always at the guaranteed lowest price, whether you buy or lease to own, and no credit checks. So, do the math. Nobody, 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 nobody beats Aaron's. Do the math. Nobody beats Aaron's. Mmm, don't forget the feet. You know, baby, I could really use a Bud Light. Okay. I'll be right back. <laughs> Two Bud Lights. Watch your boy. Thanks, bro. Hey, baby. Oh, yeah. Thirsty? Refreshingly smooth Bud Light. Always worth it. Time to go. Well, the technical term for what I do is neurosurgery. I am a brain doctor. I'm a lifeguard. I save people. I'm a race car driver. Formula 2. 
One. One. Me, oh, I'm a hand model. 20 million? No, that's not enough. I'm a big game hunter, cage fighter. Lumberjack. Must get lonely out there. Yeah, well, I do have the dolphins. I'm an author, mostly books. I told my friend you were a lawyer. In the off season. Tiger Woods, the most powerful force in golf, more than halfway to Jack's record 18 majors. Phil Mickelson, two-time Masters champion, going for his third straight major. The top two in the world take on the world's best at golf's greatest championship from famed winged foot. The 106th U.S. Open Championship, returning June 15th on NBC. Nominee number four for AFL Play of the Year. A missed field goal turns into a great opportunity for C.J. Johnson of Chicago. One problem with this nominee, though, Charles. Bobby Scipio came to town for Chicago, and this became a memory to keep C.J. Johnson warm. Hasn't played much since Bobby got to town. Looked spectacular, but a lot of good it did him. Go to arenafootball.com and vote. We'll continue today and tomorrow nominating the AFL Plays of the Year. Bob? All right, Al. Six seconds to go here in the fourth. Inexplicably, Chicago used one of their three timeouts rather than take a delay of game penalty. Woody Danzler was late getting on the field. Danzler with the catch. Danzler out to about the 23-yard line, and that is the end of the third quarter. 15 minutes left of play. The winner advances to Arena Bowl 20 in Las Vegas. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. You're watching the AFL Conference Championships on NBC. From the producers of the Da Vinci Code. This copyrighted telecast to the Arena Football League may not be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the express written permission of the AFL and NBC. Two of the hottest teams in the AFL battling toe-to-toe -to -toe for a trip to Arena Bowl 20 in Las Vegas. A couple of key turnovers, capitalization, hard hits, and a lot of emotion. 15 minutes to decide who will be the American Conference Championship and gain a berth in Las Vegas next Sunday for Arena Bowl 20, Chicago or San Jose. Bob Papa, Ray Bentley, Marty Snyder. This game has not been separated by more than one possession for either side. Alfonso in motion. Joe Jacobs. Of San Jose, number 93, shot across the line. Yeah, and Jacobs playing a nose tackle position, which he is not really accustomed to playing, but San Jose has their best three pass rushers on the field right now in Reed, Bates, and Jacobs. Smith with contact, number 93 defense, five yard penalty, remains first down. Update on the San Jose injury situation. Brian Johnson, the fullback linebacker, out of this ball game. Barry Wagner came in, but he has a hamstring. He can't stay in, so Phil Glover has got to play. Garazio with time, throws the bullet for Scipio through his hands incomplete. And he was going for Scipio the whole way on that one. Chicago went stationary, no motion. And they wanted to use Scipio's big body on Omar Smith to see if they could win that battle on the post route coming across from left to right here. I think they did everything right except Scipio didn't catch it. Yeah, it was there, and he used the body to perfection, but he just didn't make the grab. Can make a case that was slightly overthrown, but if you're Bobby Scipio, you need to make that catch. Second and five, Dennison Robinson in motion. Garazio, Alfonso has the first down and dumped by Smith at the 11-yard line. Good open field running 
by Alfonso. Another clutch play by Juwan Alfonso. And the pleasure of talking with him the last couple of weeks, Bob. And he's one of those self-made guys when he played rocket football as a youth. He had to get a paper route in order to pay for his fee to get into the league and to buy his equipment. So he got himself a paper route so he could play some football. And when he was in college, he started a real estate business. And he says he does better in his real estate business than he does in football. Alfonso in motion on a first down. Dennison Robinson rubbed into the wall by Floyd. Picks up six on the play. It'll be second and four for Chicago. Matt Grazio has been beat around a little bit today, but there was good coverage on that one. It gave him time to hold the ball and then find that check down receiver. And right now, you've got big on big. And what I mean by that, you've got the best configuration of offensive linemen in the game for Chicago, and you've got the best three pass rushers in the game for San Jose. Second and four, Grazio, McMillan, well read by Rowe. McMillan fights for an extra yard or two. It'll set up the third and short for Chicago. Nice play by James Rowe coming and making that tackle because he, was, he definitely had a mismatch going there against Bob McMillan, who goes 6'3 and 260. And Rowe is about 198 pounder right there. But he got the wrap on him and kept the wrap and then flung him to the ground. Big play. Third and two for Chicago. Alfonso in motion. Garazio throws it. Caught by Alfonso. Could be a touchdown. Well, let's see. If not, he's got at least a first down. Touchdown. A touchdown. Yeah. It's a touchdown. Dewan Alfonso. Man, is he tough. How about that grab? Because Floyd was just draped all over him right there at the goal line. And the momentum carried him back into the field of play. But the two officials got together talking about what you see, what you see. They came up with touchdown on the ruling. And I think that's a correct call. In a worst case scenario, he would have had first right. and goal inside the one because they could have picked up a first down. Floyd pleading his case. France has missed two big extra points in this game. Well, this one will make it more than a field goal, which is huge. Good snap. And he missed another one. Out. Did, did someone turn on a light right behind the uprights as he was about to kick that? It wouldn't surprise me, but, you know, kicker's supposed to be looking at the ball anyway. It shouldn't matter if, if they turn the lights completely out. you got to watch the football, and France didn't do that. That is three missed extra points for Dan France. Here's another look at that touchdown. You can see it right here in the corner of the end zone. Definitely a catch. And I believe he was in the end zone, a proper call by the officials. Maybe on this angle, you can see it even better. Yeah, he's got that ball. There's the goal line right up there. That was definitely a touchdown and a heck of a play by DeJuan Alfonso. Chicago with the lead here in the fourth conference championship at stake. Before winning the World Series of Poker, my life was quite different. I was your typical nine to fiver. Get up, go to the office, work on the computer all day come home, play with my daughter, eat dinner with the family, put my daughter to bed, and play some online poker at PokerStars.net. Playing poker on the internet at PokerStars.net is very convenient. Go to PokerStars.net, you're on, you're in a game in seconds, playing poker for as long or as short a time as you like. I'm just a normal guy who likes to play poker, and PokerStars.net is a great way to improve your game. We're a pretty tight group here. That doesn't happen overnight. People have to learn that they can count on you. You know what I mean? All the yes, sir, I do. See how Army training gives you strength for now, strength for later at GoArmy.com. Hey, what's up? Arena football. Rated E10 for ages 10 and up. E.A. Sports.
sports. It's in the game. NBC Thursday hits the jackpot with four episodes of the smash hit My Name is Earl. Wahoo! Then, from one lottery winner to 20, it's the premiere of Windfall. Yeah! 20 friends will discover that money changes everything. I'm off to buy a football team. Can I pick you up anything? Windfall premieres after the Earl Marathon Thursday. Up and down day for Chicago kicker Dan France. He's hit a 51-yard field goal, but he's missed three extra points. And Ray, I knew my eyes weren't lying. On the last extra point, watch on the lower left of your screen. Just as he's about to kick the ball, they turn the motorcycle lights on. And they point it right at Dan France. Did that distract him? I'm not making any excuse for him missing the extra point, but it caught my eye as we were taking a look at it. And there's the motorcycle in the tunnel. They happen to turn that light on for the motorcycle just as he was getting ready to kick the extra point. Well, you hope that they just happened to. Now, I'm not making any excuses for Dan, but it was right there. Kick goes underneath the slack netting. It'll be a touchback as McKenzie doesn't get a chance at the return. You know, that's the only play that I call off our monitor is field goals and extra points because you have a better look than from our midfield position. And it caught my eye as he was getting ready to kick it. I'm sure, Coach Arbet had nothing to do with it. He's more worried about getting points on the board. But Dan France missing three extra points. Boy, how about some consistency from Mark Grebe in that second half? Nine for nine today, but just the one touchdown pass. Grebe, make it 10 for 10. He hits Rowe. You know, Grebe, a couple of years ago in the 2004 season, for the balance of the season, connected on 73% of his passes. It's amazing. He is known as, if not the most one of the most accurate quarterbacks in the arena football league and if you give him time you know about he'll he'll carve you up like a plastic surgeon and he almost wasn't in san jose this year nelson in motion nelson catch your nurdle and mcmillan on the tackle time to take a look at today's u.s army game summary and some key aspects of today's game Wagner and Johnson both out of the game for San Jose with injuries. Floyd, career high 10 catches, 116 yards, picking up the slack. France missing three extra points for Chicago. That's our U.S. Army game summary. Chicago with a slim lead here in the fourth. First and 10, San Jose. Nelson in motion. Floyd can't reel it in. And finally, an incomplete pass for Mark Reed. Well, what a play by Dennison Robinson who came up there and he read the quarterback's eyes saw the whip route coming at him and then closed and made the hit immediately. I don't know that Floyd would have caught the ball without the hit but it was a nice exclamation point on the incompletion with Robinson being in the perfect position once again. Second and ten for San Jose. Rowe in motion. Reed check down Nelson rubbed into the wall at the 26 yard line Mike Reed was nearly a Chicago rush talking to Mike Cohen yesterday they had convinced Reed's wife Chicago was the place to be they had him at coach Owens house in the offseason and he had all the kids in the neighborhood with Chicago rush Mark Reed jerseys yeah. But Grieve decided to re-sign with San Jose rather than go to Chicago. Yeah, and Hohenstee had a theory that in large part it was due to a, a loyalty to Terry Malley in terms of coming back to the Bay Area. Nearly intercepted by Unertle, intended for Rowe. And that's Unertle's game right there. He's very good coming up on the press, but what he, where he has made most of his interceptions, Bob, is undercutting the deep routes. He plays deep. He's back, look at him way back here, making the break on the ball and undercutting the route. And if you hang a ball up, Unertle's going to get a hand on it, and that brings up a huge fourth down now. Yeah, it looked like the ball might have slipped a little out of Greaves' hands. He didn't kind of waffled a little bit. San Jose is going to go for it here on fourth down. Fourth and three. Nelson in motion. Greed under pressure. Throws it to Ray. He makes the pass. Oh, the ball up. Loose, incomplete. Russell Shaw knocked him into the wall. 
James Rowe hit the wall awkwardly. He's still down, but the ball came out. What a finish by Russell Shaw, and now we check on the great James Rowe, one of the classiest players in the AFL. Well, here's Grieve, the crossing route to Rowe. That's their bread and butter. That's their favorite play on third down. Rowe's got it. One step. Oh, he landed awkwardly on the right leg. He was hurt before he hit the wall, and that's when he lost the football. They've already lost Barry Wagner. He has been nicked up in this game. Injury to Brian Johnson, the fullback linebacker, and now 32-year-old James Rowe, a three-time All-Ironman team player, down and hurt for the San Jose Sabercats. Arena Bowl 20, Las Vegas, next Sunday, 3 Eastern, NBC. Hey, will you unzip me, please? Oh, sure. Can you pass me that dress right there? Yeah, no problem. Hey, spruce me. Okay. All right. Wait, what, what are you doing? That's deodorant. Oh, sorry. And you call yourself a hairdresser? <laughs> no. I'm just here for the Bud Light. Oh. Hey. Refreshingly smooth Bud Light. Always worth it. You know, when I was 15, I was Miss Teen Oklahoma. Interesting. Well, I've written two best-selling poker books, and I'm six foot nine. Amazing. From 10 feet away, I can throw a playing card through a carrot. Oh, Miss Oklahoma, good. Oklahoma. <laughs> to learn chat and play with the pros for free, go where they live. FullTiltPoker.net. Now available on Mac. I woke up in the middle of the night, terrified. Someone tried to come in my house. Fortunately, we had an ADT security system. Mrs. Parker, this is ADT. We're receiving an alarm. Are you all right? Yes, we're okay. I'm glad ADT was there, watching out for my family. Don't take chances. Take control of your family's safety with ADT, America's number one security company. Call now and save up to $200 on ADT protection packages. ADT. Always there. The AFL on NBC brought to you by ADT, America's residential and commercial security leader. By Las Vegas, the best seats for every game. No tickets required. It only happens in one place, only Vegas. And by the United States Army, an army of one. The American Conference Championship game in San Jose. James Rowe shaken up on that fourth down play. Ray will take another look at it. Well, watch his right leg as he lands back on the ground. Shaw gets the push on him, knocks him off balance, and his right leg, as he hits the ground right here, it's, if you're faint of heart, don't look at this, because it bends the wrong way. And now James Rowe actually got up and walked off the field. He must be made out of rubber in order to be able to bend his body that in that extreme fashion with that kind of force on his leg, and yet he walked off the field. Now lost in all that, Bobby, was the fourth down play. That was a huge stop. For Chicago now with a three-point lead and possession of the football here midway through the fourth quarter. And Matarazio and the Chicago there Rush capitalize. Five. Scipio in motion on a first and ten. Scipio with the catch, a gain of nine and a half. Levan Thomas on the cover. Scipio has been huge in this game. He's got three touchdown catches. He's also drawn three pass interferences that were huge that converted plays into first downs. Well, when they brought Bobby Scipio into Chicago, and Mike Hohenstein was like a kid with a new toy. He immediately put him in offensive specialist position. He said the thing Scipio is able to do in terms of stretching the field allows Hohenstein to be that much more creative in his play calling. Dantzler uh, to Scipio. Touchdown, Chicago. Durazio to Scipio. 17 yards on the score, and now Chicago goes up. 51-42 with a iffy extra point pending. And Scipio just used his big body on this route. He's going to cut right in front of your screen right here. And he cuts in front of Thomas, who took that undercut angle. And as he takes the undercut angle, he's going to take himself out of the play because Durazio throws it up over the top and away from him. And that's just the speed and the big body of Scipio creating the room for Durazio to get the ball in there. Dan France for an extra point. No motorcycle lights present yet. 
And France just slips that inside the left upright, and it is good. Ten-point lead for Chicago. Bobby Scipio, four touchdown catches. Matt DeRazio had time. Scipio had the size. Chicago trying to advance. For years, I ate fried food and burgers that looked like this. And I looked like this. Then I found Subway restaurants. And I realized I could enjoy lots of great tasting food without lots of fat. Like the new fresh toasted Tuscan chicken sandwich. All white meat chicken, grilled veggies, melted cheese, and Tuscan vinaigrette. All fresh out of the oven and all with eight grams of fat. Eight grams. And with the help of the Tuscan chicken sandwich, I'm keeping it off. Subway, eat fresh. Loctite power grab, grabs instantly. With nine times higher initial hold than the leading brand, without bracing. Loctite power grab, project solved. sales and lease ownership store and you'll find brand new brand name furniture electronics appliances and computers always at the guaranteed lowest price whether you buy or lease to own and no credit checks so do the math nobody 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 beats errands do the math nobody beats errands imagine you just won the lottery what would you do next i'm off to buy a football team can I pick you up anything? Could Windfall you? premieres Thursday, 10, 9 central on NBC. Joe Hamilton and the underdog predators face Clint Dolzell and the dominating Desperados. On the line, a trip to Arena Bowl 20 Las Vegas, Sunday, free Eastern NBC. Back in New York with our final play of the year nominee, Clint Sterner to Corey Fleming, and then it gets really wild. I don't know if that's a hook and a lateral or is it a hook and a ladder? Is that Tony Nathan taking the ball and scoring? Well, it's good looking. Go to arenafootball.com and vote if you think that is the play of the year. Back to Bob and Ray. Well, how you expect that from Nashville, Music City Miracle. Mike Cohensy, the head coach of the Chicago Rush with a 10-point lead, trying to do it the hard way. The Pittsburgh Steelers, the Super Bowl champions, had to win three road playoff games en route to a Super Bowl victory. The first team since the 1985 Patriots to do that. The Chicago Rush, can they do the same? They have a 10-point lead here at San Jose. You saw me underline all those ats, Bobby, and if Chicago can keep this lead that they have right now, they will be at the Arena Bowl. Mike Cohen C talking with them earlier in the week and yesterday, they had lost three in a row. Three in a row and five of six in the midway point of the season, and he referred to the Steelers who needed a late season charge just to get into the playoffs as that kick hits the slack inning and is ruled a touchback. You know, at one point late in the season, Pittsburgh was on the outside looking in with Roethlisberger hurt, and he said to his team, look, they looked horrible on Monday Night Football in a loss at Indianapolis. They didn't play well down the stretch, and ironically, it was a Pittsburgh win against the Chicago Bears that sort of jump-started the Steelers' season got them into the postseason with a late season finish he said I said to my team every meeting every practice we're going to approach it with urgency and he said his team focused Reeves pass incomplete flag on the play the other thing coach Owens he said is I said to my players look let's go about every practice every meeting as if it can happen for us just like it did the Pittsburgh Steelers as we take the call Legal defense. Linebacker out of the box, number 92, five yard penalty, automatic first down. That's yeah. Charlie Cook, and he said to his players, Look, you can go home and play PlayStation or take the DVD home and study some film every night. And they took it to heart. You know, and then the addition of, of Bobby Scipio to this football team and then the rising play of Jeremy Unertle made them strong down the middle, and that's where you win in arena football. Wide open, McKenzie, flag on the play, McKenzie in for the score. And that was a case of Russell Shaw gambling and biting on the initial route. 
McKenzie will run a little hitch and go. And Shaw jumped on it and then tried to grab McKenzie, and that's what the flag is all about. This will be a touchdown. Number three defense. Penalty has declined. The result of the play is a touchdown. It is on Russell Shaw. McKenzie's third touchdown of the ball game. And here's the, the stop and then the go. And Russell Shaw bit on the go, and then he whipped on the uh, intentional pass interference. Got the holding call nonetheless, but when you're beaten and you bite into that deal, your best chance at that point to prevent a touchdown is to go ahead and grab the receiver. Well, he missed on the grab as well. Uh, Kevin McKenzie activated from injured reserve, won an arena bowl last year with Colorado. Took advantage of a mistake and easily went the distance for a touchdown. Chicago's lead down to three. to play with play online at partypoker.net the world's largest poker school more players more tables more winners sign up now to partypoker.net the best place to learn how to win all right all right okay this is who i am this is where i'm from this is what i believe in when the day is done this is Some things no never change. Way. Look at this kid. Hi, Spence. What's going on? Tag, How's good. the army treating you? It's good. It's real good. What do they, they got you doing? Like jumping out of planes? Or? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm working with computers. Computers? Oh. Well, you, you could have done that here, right? Yeah. <laughs> Not really. See how army training gives you strength for now, strength for later at GoArmy.com. 18 million people watched the first round of Last Comic Standing. Yeah! And this Tuesday, the winning comics face the biggest audience of their careers. Are you excited to see me live? We're not sure who the heck you are. It all starts at 8, 7 central with a recap of round one. Followed by an all new episode at 9, 8 central Tuesday on NBC. Matt Terrazzi on the Chicago Rush with a three point lead here in San Jose, the American Conference Championship and a berth to Arena Bowl 20 at stake next week in Las Vegas. Right on the return, Chicago is guarding against an onside kick. Gets it to the five, ball came loose. San Jose says they have it, but yeah, the both momentum are gonna stop. Yeah, yes. momentum will stop, so they're gonna rule that correctly that it's Chicago's ball. Solid progress was stopped at the five. Marquise Floyd arguing his point to no avail. Well, I'll take another look at it. Here's Carlos Wright, and it's excellent coverage by the Sabercats. And right there, this thing is stopped. Momentum is stopped. Whistle is blown. And then the knee is even down, and then the ball comes out on a late blow-up hit by Dan Loney. Wright lucky he wasn't hurt. Well, Matt Terrazio in Chicago must respond to San Jose's latest score. Looking for Scipio. Oh, what a catch by Scipio over Omar Smith. And that's the size disparity and then also the ability of Scipio to track the ball. But there is a flag on the play, Bobby. Back at the line of scrimmage. Offensive holding. Roughing the passer. Could be anything. We'll find out. 55 off the half the distance to the goal. The first down. Curtis Eason for the hold, negating the Scipio cap. And it, too bad for Scipio on that one. That was just an unbelievable athletic move that he made. He was looking over his inside shoulder. The ball came over his outside shoulder, and he was able to transition and still track the football and bring it in. Achi oh, Molden. In motion. Garazio underneath can't find Molden. He was open. 
And Molden tried to run a short crossing route through the box. And it's trouble getting through there. Clevan Thomas did a nice job of getting the hands on him. Here's Clevan Thomas, but uh, he kind of knocks him down. He goes through the box. And Garazio, with the heat on him, is not able to lead him and get the ball to him on time. He kind of had to throw that one away. Second and 13 for Chicago. Oh, Nursing a three-point lead. Garazio back for Morgan, and he dropped it. I'll tell you, though, that's a dangerous throw from Matt Garazio, rolling to your right, leading it down and throwing it all the way across the field. And he's fortunate all he got was an incomplete out of that. And I think Molden felt the presence of Cleveland Thomas coming up to lay a, a hit on him. You see, here's Garazio, and he's winging it all the way across the other way. A dangerous decision. And here's Cleveland Thomas coming up there ready to make a hit. And Molden heard the footsteps. And now Bill McCabe says reset the play clock. And this crowd is getting back into it, getting behind the home saber cast. Hey, what's up? What's up? And that kind of throw that DeRazio just made usually results in a pick six going the other way. Well, this is a tremendously huge play here, Bob. Third down, 13, backed up, and the crowd going crazy against you. Scipio yeah. in motion. DeRazio, Dennison Robinson's got it. Dennison Robinson has a first down up to the 17-yard line. Well, and I don't understand the cushion that Marquise Floyd gave Robinson. He was way off of him. And usually, you know, when it's third and 13, we may, I used to make a sticks call with my defenders where you, you don't back off further than the sticks, meaning the first down marker. And if they don't threaten you past that, you sit there. That way, if they do catch it underneath, you can come up and make a play. But Floyd way too deep on that and allowed Robinson to get that first down. Go! Yeah. Scipio in motion. Dennison Robinson, little slip screen. And with two hands on the ball, he protects it and picks up nine. Dennison Robinson with a huge play on a third and 13. Well, here's Floyd right here on that previous play when, they, you know, they were third and 13. Bob, go ahead and let it run. And you're going to see how deep he gets. Look at him way back, way back. He's all the way back here out of the picture. There's no one back there threatening you. you got to get yourself up there at the sticks so you can make an instant hit after that underneath check down. A mistake on the defense by San Jose. Second and one for Chicago. DeRazio. Robinson against the wall, and he made the catch first down. That's three in a row for Robinson, who is one of the, what I call an unsung type hero for the Chicago football team, a guy that doesn't get a lot of publicity and doesn't get talked about a lot. And he said, you know, when I asked him about that, he said, you know, I take that as a compliment. That, you know, I'm, they just count on me. They're, I'm a guy that they know is going to get it done. And he, he didn't mind that being unsung. Dennison Robinson, five catches, 58 yards. Molden in motion on a first and ten. Garazio just parks it, incomplete. Great coverage by Omar Smith on Atu Molden. And that clock continues to move. And in fact, Chicago. They do not have to run a play until the one-minute timing rules. Right. Darren Arbett may choose to use a timeout beforehand, or he can save him for the last minute. It's really a coin flip as far as how you handle that situation. Looks like he's going to let it roll down to the final minute. Yeah, the play clock still has 10 seconds. It'll take us to the one-minute timing rules. Mike Cohency and the Chicago Rush with his quarterback, Matt DeRazio. Ben Nelson. Well, first in Arena Bowl 20 at stake. Well, the technical term for what I do is neurosurgery. I am a brain doctor. I'm a lifeguard. I save people. I'm a race car driver. Formula 2. One. One. Me, oh, I'm a hand model. 20 million? No, that's not enough. I'm a big game hunter, cage fighter. Lumberjack. Must get lonely out there. Yeah, well, I do have the dolphins. I'm an author, mostly books. I told my friend you were a lawyer. In the off season. Thank you for calling.
calling ADT Security Services. I just wanted you to know, that security system saved me twice. You all have given me peace of mind. I tell everybody I see, get an ADT security system. Like these customers and millions more, you'll feel more secure with ADT in your home. ADT can help protect your family from burglary, fire, and carbon monoxide. Call now and save up to $200 on an ADT protection package. You may even save up to 20% off your homeowner's insurance. ADT, always there. When something is real, Ain't you know it. Like the real thing, baby. Introducing new like Just for Men. Thing. Its new True Color formula targets only gray. Easy as shampooing for a natural look that is real. So real to the eye, real to the touch, real where it counts. New True Color Just for Men. It's the battle for sports world's revered trophy, the Stanley Cup. The Hurricanes, Captain Rod Brindamore's Game 7 heroes lifted them into the championship round. The Oilers, can big game goalie Wayne Rosen and these ultimate underdogs pull off another upset? The Stanley Cup Final on NBC, presented by Sprint, next Saturday in prime time, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Facing a big third and 13, Matt DeRazio with a huge pass to Dennison Robinson for the Chicago Rush. And he looked off the other side, and that brought Floyd deeper in his coverage to help on a deep ball there. And then Mike Hohensey cheerleading his team as they try to get that first down. Get the first, get the first, get the first. First down, baby, first down. He's into it. And he's a fun one to talk to, Bobby. When we talk to him, he gets us going. He gets us excited. Well, you remember last year they lost that heartbreaker in Denver against the Colorado Crush with a chance to go to the Arena Bowl. Two years ago, losing here in San Jose after quarterback Raymond Filial was hurt. Second and ten for Garazio. And he goes down. Clock continues to move. San Jose does have three timeouts remaining. And San Jose, I believe, took one of those timeouts. Time to take a look at the ADT defensive play of the game. And Jeremy Unertle saving a touchdown. Yeah, this was on the drive that Chicago got the big stop. And this is the third and long play that Unertle undercut James Rowe and made that play. And then they got a stop on fourth down. That's the... ADT defensive play of the game. Big third and 11 here for Chicago. Garazio looking for Scipio. Can't reel it in. Why well, Scipio wanted a call because Clavan Thomas was all over in the whole way. But that time, Clavan got the tight coverage, but not the flag. And here it is, the press at the line. Nice job of getting the press, getting the contact. Now you see him, he keeps the hand in there, but there's no late push at the end. And so they let that one go. Fourth and 11, fourth and 12 for Chicago. Up by three. Mike Cohensee going for it. Boy, and they're all in all press across the board. Yeah. Scipio in motion. They lob it up for Scipio. Flags, and Cleveland Thomas was just all over him. That is the fourth interference drawn by Scipio. And Cleveland Thomas never got his head turned around to look for the football. And the key to that play was Scipio beat the jam at the line of scrimmage. And once you do that, now that defender is in a tough spot in a trail technique. Interference, defense, penalties, half the distance, take goal, automatic first down. You know, when we asked Bobby Scipio about the physical press of San Jose, he said, forget about them, they have to deal with me. And he's right about that one. As you saw, Thomas never got his head turned around, had his hands and jostled Scipio at the end there, and that is an appropriate call. Mike Coensey saying, where is it? He Flag was a little late it. coming out. Darren Arbett, head coach of the San Jose Sabercats, trying to get back to the Arena Bowl. First down for Chicago. Dorazio will run it. Glover on the tackle. Now San Jose has to use timeouts. If you have the lead in less than a minute, to, in the one-minute timing rules, the offense needs to gain positive yardage. DeRazio did just that. If he doesn't gain positive yards, then the clock stops for free. So San Jose has to burn a timeout. 
The winner advances to Arena Bowl 20 next Sunday in Las Vegas. The National Conference Championship contested tomorrow in Dallas, Dallas and Orlando. You'll see it here on NBC. John Moyer with a huge sack in this game, one of the veteran leaders of the Chicago Rush. McMillan, the fullback, Scipio in motion, Garazio, Scipio, bobbles it, touchdown! Well, Scipio almost forgot the football there for a second and then brought it back in right along the wall. A great throw from Matt Garazio. He waited, he had patience, he maneuvered in the pocket and then threw a dart against the wall where only Scipio could get it. Working on Cleveland Thomas, Scipio with another touchdown catch. And here's Scipio using his physical presence and the big body. And Cleveland Thomas thought the play was over. He looked back instead of staying on Scipio, and that allowed just enough time for Scipio to get the separation. Dan France hits the, uh, hits the extra point to put Chicago up by 10. Matt DeRazio. And the Chicago Rush with the lead here in the fourth. Scipio, five touchdown catches, not to mention four pass interferences that he's drawn. Yeah, a great game by Bobby Scipio, and he's the guy that they wanted to go to. He's the, the guy that this offense revolves around because if they're not committing two defenders to Scipio, then he's going to win the matchup most of the time, and that's been the case today. And now if they do commit two to him, that's when DeRazio checks down to other guys. Well, San Jose felt that Cleveland Thomas could take Scipio out, and they've gone one-on-one -on -one with him all day, and Scipio has come out ahead in that battle. Mike Cohen, see? The head coach of the Rush quarterback in this league. The first touchdown pass in AFL history was thrown by that man, Mike Hohensey. And his team closing in on a berth in Arena Bowl 20. James Rowe injured here in the fourth. Barry Wagner has been hurt. Brian Johnson hurt. Ben Nelson, the rookie of the year, has been kept under wraps. Bobby Scipio. Remember, Ray, on fourth and 12, two plays before the touchdown it was Scipio who drew the pass interference to keep the drive alive for Chicago and it's just a physical mismatch you know Bobby Scipio coming in there and, and they really San Jose doesn't really have anybody who can match up with 6 3 220 as a receiver coming out and he's taking advantage of that all day I Cohen he told us he has done everything we asked since he's been here his teammates say his preparation has been impeccable. McKenzie. How about this? Kevin McKenzie. Touchdown. San Jose. They're right it back ain't over, it. baby. It ain't over. Kevin McKenzie. 57 yards. And McKenzie couldn't put it any better than we can. It ain't over, baby. 27 seconds left. This extra point here will be key, but this is why McKenzie was activated this week because he gives him that extra big play type of guy, and it couldn't have come at a better time for the San Jose Sabercats as he just gashes the middle of the field and then outruns the kicker. Big extra point here for Schmitz. Hits the upright, and it rattles in to make it a three-point game. Kevin McKenzie, who won an Arena Bowl last year with Colorado, paying huge dividends here in the postseason for San Jose. You see the contact right there, but it's too late. He doesn't touch the wall. That's a clean touchdown. And now we'll see San Jose attempt an onside kick, and that's what the season's going to come down to. Four touchdowns for McKenzie, two receiving, one on a kickoff return, and one rushing. That's the, the thing that San Jose has done throughout the years. You take one guy away, they have another guy who can get it done. You know, you look at the injuries, Wagner goes out early, James Rowe gets hurt, and yet they still have the depth on this team to create explosive play, plays and stay in a ball game. The beauty of the AFL right here. It's never over. 10-point lead, 30-something seconds to go. But anything can happen. And Kevin McKenzie just breathed life into the San Jose Sabercats.
Ryan Schmitz getting set for the onside kick. Kicked with New Orleans last year. And the where he's got the ball set, Bob, I expect he'll either do one of two things, dribble it down the middle or try to kick the high bouncer over to this side. Schmitz pops it in the air. Scipio's got it. Bobby Scipio recovers it for Chicago. Ball came loose, but he's ruled down on the spot. He is ruled down. With 22 seconds to go, and there's no instant replay in the AFL. And Schmitz, the kicker, was vehement, yelling at the official until Joe Jacobs grabbed him and got him out of there. But there's Scipio. Mate, that's why he's in that position with the sure hands and the ability to go up. But he was definitely down before that ball came out. You know, though, he was on the body of Glover, right? Yeah, but the knee, knee went touched. down. Yep. The, knee knee, the knee went down before he landed on the body. All right. So now Chicago must gain positive yardage. DeRazio does just that. And San Jose burns a timeout with 19 seconds to go. Mike Hohensey, 19 seconds away from Arena Bowl 20. It's time for the U.S. Army Ironman of the game. And the honor goes to Marquise Floyd. Had 10 catches in the ball game, 116 yards and one touchdown. Made some plays on defense as well. And he caught every one of his balls out in the first half. So he's the Iron Man of the first half more than anything else. It's the U.S. Army Iron Man of the game. Of course, Floyd had to go the whole way with Barry Wagner hurt. Gave up that big third and 13 to Dennison Robinson. Chicago up by three. DeRazio moves the pile inside the five. That's positive yardage. San Jose burns their final timeout. And so all Chicago needs to do now is get positive yards on this snap, and the game will be over. Well, Ray, can't you just drop back to pass since San Jose is out of timeouts and throw the ball into the well, stand. Well, then the clock will stop, and then you're looking at yeah, fourth down. pass with one minute time. Right, so with 15 seconds left, what you want to do here is run that quarterback sneak again. Have DeRazio push, and have Bob McMillan as the fullback get right in his back and have him give a push a la Reggie Bush <laughs> to get that positive yardage. Of course, Reggie Bush with the push of Matt Leinart in the game against Notre Dame. DeRazio keeps it, gets the push, gets positive yardage, and that is it. The Chicago Rush have advanced to Arena Bowl 20. They're the American Conference champions, winning three consecutive road playoff games to advance to Arena Bowl 20. Let's send it down to Marty Snyder. Well, Coach Owensee is going around getting all of his congratulations. Let's get a word with him. 0-3 in the semis coming into this game. You said all the adversity would just make it that much sweeter, does it? It's sweet right now. All I know is that I don't care who we're playing right now. We're going to Vegas, and this is the team I want to bring. You did all the winning on the road. Do you have one more in you, Coach? I think we do. Uh, they don't need me right now. All right, that's my Coach Mike Owens. He did so much for this league over the years. Finally, will make his first Arena Bowl appearance. Before the start of the playoffs, he gave his team an itinerary of what it would be like to be at the Arena Bowl, and he said, this could be you. Just work hard. Why not us? And it is the Chicago Rush. They will get a chance to use that Arena Bowl itinerary that Mike Cohen he drew up before the start of the playoffs. And the road that they took, Bobby, on the road throughout the playoffs, they beat Nashville in the first round and then to unseat the defending champions in Colorado last week and then to come into San Jose, a team that had won eight consecutive ball games and then almost unbeatable here at home in the postseason and then to pull it out in the end, that's huge. Mike Cohensee, Bob McMillan, Coach Houseman on the way to Arena Bowl 20. They await the winner of tomorrow's National Conference Championship game between Dallas and Orlando, a game you'll see here on NBC at 3 o'clock. Eastern time. Once again, the final score from San Jose, the Chicago Rush 59, the San Jose Sabercats 56, the Chicago Rush are the American Conference champions advancing to Arena Bowl 20. Coming up next on NBC, except in the West Coast, it's your local news, then at 8 Central, an all-new Dateline NBC 